A bell rang in the school announcing the end of classes. It was already late afternoon and the golden rays of the setting sun illuminated the city. A girl dressed in a school uniform tucked her hair behind her ear and said softly, Oh, what? The chubby boy confessed to her through fear that he liked her. There were beads of sweat running down his face because he was worried. But he kept saying that from the first time he saw her, and as they got closer, he liked Dion. Siwu and her classmate were standing in the empty classroom between their desks, and the sun was shining directly on them. Dean thought for a moment, covering her mouth with her hand, and looked uncertainly at the floor. The hero was more nervous, so he opened his eyes wide and excitedly said to her, I'm sorry. It's probably embarrassing when someone she doesn't like says that. Dion was very surprised and quickly spoke, no, nothing like that. She waved her hands sharply in an attempt to justify herself, and then looked down at the floor. Dion hesitantly continued to say that Siwoo is kind and funny and funny. Why wouldn't she like him? Siwoo stood there, clenching his fists and frowning, and continued to listen to the girl with embarrassment. Dion, meanwhile, said, but if he knows, she does. The girl did not have time to finish, and the action was transferred to the sports field located right next to the school. Many students were playing soccer in shirts and trousers. A guy was standing under the basketball hoop, throwing a backpack on one shoulder. He noticed a friend approaching and, looking at him, quietly asked, and how is everything? He interrupted himself, after a moment continuing to speak, apparently it's better not to even ask. Siwu walked with a drooping face. He became despondent, and a dark cloud seemed to form around him, like a cloud. With tears in his eyes, Siwu walked over to his friend, also looking at the floor. This friend, meanwhile, put his arm around Siwu, who was shorter than him, and said, well, he was preparing for this outcome, right. Siwu looked up in displeasure and admitted that Dion said she wanted to focus on her studies. The tall guy looked doubtfully to the side and said, she could have done better, especially knowing that she was far from an excellent student. With pain in his voice and tears in his eyes, Siwu didn't understand just why this happened. He couldn't finish his sentence as he felt something flying fast to his left, even without turning in that direction. He stopped the soccer ball with his hand, which was already about to crash into him. The players from the field were shouting at him, Hey, I'm sorry, is he okay? A guy in an orange vest was approaching Sieve and his friend, checking their condition. Siwu had tears streaming down his face as he continued to hold the ball in his hands and asked why it looked like this. His friend rubbed his hand, looking at Siva in a friendly way, and said that this was a very big mystery even for him. Sivu plays sports and is good at it. It counts the calories it consumes. If everyone on a diet tried at least half of its strength, then there would be no obese people left in the world. Indeed, Siwu played basketball very well, being able to jump to the very end, watched his diet, jumped rope and ran a lot. His friend asked him when they went out of school, and he went to the hospital. Siwu replied in frustration, it was many times. The guy asked what they were saying to him. Siwu exhaled heavily, and said that if despite all his efforts, the weight is still there, then there is a 99% chance that it is all due to genetics. It wasn't long before Siwu was at his home, closing the door loudly behind him. In his mind, he thought, genetics, that would be great if it were true. He was looking at pictures of his parents, who were standing with their arms around each other, slender and beautiful. Even if it wasn't fair, he would have been able to just accept the situation. The guy was looking at a photo of himself and his smiling mother as an adult. Both in his youth and now, his mother was used to compliments. Then Siwu ran his finger over the photo of his father and thought that he had never seen his father personally, but he had heard a lot about him. Although his career was short, his records and strength are still known today. On the kitchen table, Siwu found a bowl of salad and an attached note that said, Stay strong, son. Diet is good, but it is most beautiful when it is healthy. And next to it was a smiling smiley face. Siwu wondered if the extra weight was unimportant. My mother said that his body type was such that he had to build up his thoughts just by breathing. The guy furrowed his brows and said how angry he was. He opened one of the upper food cabinets, looked at a few packets of noodles, and said, What's the use of dieting if it doesn't work? The guy lit the fire on the stove and took out the groceries, still thinking out loud. How many years of futile effort had he put into it? Instead of worrying unnecessarily, it's better for him to eat properly. Siwu picked up one of the packets of noodles, he was about to open it, but for some reason the packet refused to break. Beads of sweat were already rolling down his face from his exertion, and he thought, what? What a horror, the package refused to open and in the end Sieve had to eat the salad, pretending that it was delicious. The stars had already appeared in the sky, and the sun was almost hidden behind the horizon. Siwu was running on the treadmill between the other people. He was already out of breath and so tired that his entire face was covered in sweat. 
he looked at the phone attached to his hand, which displayed a distance of 4 kilometers. Siwu kept running and his pace was faster than usual. He thought of Dean, her beautiful face and thoughtful look, and decided that he would never give up. Outside, it was already completely dark, and the only lights that lit up the area were the lanterns, which were flanked by a cluster of moths. Siwu stopped under one of these lanterns. He was very tired, so he could barely stand on his feet and rested on his knees. The guy ran a distance of 15.5 kilometers. He beat his personal best. Siwu struggled to stand up straight and clutched his lower back, frowning in pain as he thought that he had run too much. Looking around, he wondered, but has this place always been here? This is the first time he's seen it. Siwu grabbed the phone that was still hanging on his arm and thought that he needed to see where he was on the map. Suddenly, a strange loud voice rang out, saying that Siwu was as nimble as 10,000 pigs. The guy looked at the strange creature floating near the bridge in a frightened and surprised way. The light from the street lamp revealed that he was an old man with white hair and a thick white beard. This old man went on to say that it looks like blood can't be hidden. He abruptly bounced off the bridge and rose high into the air, then landed right next to Siwu with lightning speed. The frightened schoolboy took a few tentative steps back, sensing danger. He thought that it was also about six meters away, and asked aloud, Is he okay? The old man was holding something behind his back with one hand and clutching his cane with the other. He said not to be afraid, because he wasn't hunting him. His deep, hoarse voice sent shivers down my spine. The old man went on to say that he was Grandpa Babai, who serves as the judge responsible for monitoring the monsters on this peninsula. There was a purple fire in his eyes. Siwu still didn't understand anything and looked at the stranger in fear. He said hesitantly, I'm sorry. Babai furrowed his brows in frustration and said that this guy didn't seem to know anything at all. Well, well, we won't talk too long. The old man abruptly pulled open what was behind him and told me to go with him. Suddenly, a large canvas spread out in front of Siwu, which enveloped him like a cocoon. Siwu suddenly realized that he couldn't move. He desperately tried to move his hands so hard that sweat was running down his face, but he couldn't do anything. He wondered what was going on. Suddenly, the canvas opened and soared up, and Siwu himself fell to the ground, hitting the hard surface. Babai was floating above the ground, holding this very canvas by the edge. Siwu sat down on his knees and held his head, which was now hurting, and then said, What the hell? He opened his eyes to look around, and was suddenly very surprised, because he saw a place he didn't know. A space shrouded in pink smoke opened up in front of him, with mountains, trees, buildings, and a plaza underneath. Welcome to the world of monsters. Babai continued to stand behind the guy, who still couldn't understand anything because he was in shock. The old man furrowed his brows and said look around and then he will understand everything. There was a very loud trampling and growling sound from behind, and Babai calmly asked if he could see it. They are all gathered here, the inhabitants of this world, monsters. Siwu turned around in fright and saw frightening creatures with huge, very sharp teeth, similar to dinosaurs. The old man stood in the same position as before. He held the canvas behind his back with one hand, and the other gripped the cane in front of him. Once people were afraid of monsters and worshipped these creatures as gods, but now these creatures are only spoken of as beliefs and ghosts. Once every 666 years, a festival is held to determine the king of monsters among all members of the monster family around the world, including the Korean peninsula. Siwoo staggered back in fright, listening intently to the old man who continued his story. The young, talented monster is selected and presented as a candidate. 666 years ago, on a very high mountain made up of the bodies of dead monsters and the skeletons of these monsters, there was a man with very long hair. One monster ascended as a king. The old man continued to speak. 666 years had passed, but suddenly his speech was interrupted because Siwu exclaimed for him to wait. He understood, he understood, but why was he here? Babai looked at the guy with purple eyes and said, didn't he tell him yet? Each monster tribe puts up a candidate, and he is the only one who has inherited goblin blood in the monster world and in the human world. Siwu listened carefully, but didn't fully understand everything. Cold sweat trickled down his temples. The old man closed his eyes and tugged at a strand of his beard, trying to find the right words. Then he said, well, even if he's his fourth or fifth generation goblin, and even though he's mixed, Siwa once again interrupted the elder's speech and told him to forgive him in a trembling voice. He thinks Babai made a mistake. There was a very sharp noise, which made the guy scared. 
he opened his eyes wide, watching the unknown creature leap high into the sky as a bright light formed around it. This creature landed on the ground, pieces of which flew in different directions. Suu covered his face with his hands and tried to stand on his legs, which felt like cotton wool. This strange creature turned out to be a huge monster without eyes, with a very long tongue and insanely sharp teeth. The monster was bigger than a schoolboy by several times. To see how useful Siwu is, you should at least give him a test. The monster said in its terrifying voice that it thinks everything is fine with it, right, Babai? The old man frowned and said, Oh my god, if he wins, he might devour Siwa. The monster licked its lips hungrily, baring its huge teeth again. It was horrendous to the point of goosebumps. His name was the Big Mouth Goblin. The monster said it quite well. This creature should not lose the chance to eat a human for the first time in 666 years. Siwa was very much scared. He staggered back, trying to hide behind his hands, but as soon as he tried to run away, the goblin instantly caught up with him, grabbed him, and threw him straight into the ground as if the guy didn't weigh anything at all. Siwu hit the hard surface painfully and skidded several meters on it. He felt pain all over his trembling body. His clothes were smeared with dirt and blood. The big mouth goblin continued to stand still, while the old man said in his vile voice that even if Siwu inherited the goblin blood, the right to participate in the festival should not be given to an ordinary person. He furrowed his wrinkled face and said, so he should prove his worth if he wants to live. Siwu writhed in pain at those words. His entire face was smeared with sweat and dirt, and bright blood flowed from his mouth. He felt himself being pulled again and squeezed his eyes shut in pain. It was the big mouth goblin, who once again grabbed him by the clothes as if he wasn't a grown-up boy, but a very small bug. The monster's huge, sharp claws continued to scratch at the guy's back, while the big mouth goblin itself once again threw Siwa into the ground. He felt like he couldn't take the pain anymore as blood oozed out of his mouth. He clutched at his head, which was cracking with pain, and the monster towered over his battered body and said, this is stronger than it looks, right? Goblin thought he was just a delicious piece of meat. Well, this creature has nothing to lose. The monster swung its giant arm to hit Siwa one last time as the boy tried to crawl back and somehow save himself. The big mouth goblin kept saying, This will make a chop out of him, this is also fun. He waved his clawed hand, slamming the ground with all his strength. The old man closed his eyes patiently, still frowning. The goblin was pressing fiercely on the ground when it suddenly felt someone pushing it away. Since ancient times, goblins had limitless possibilities, but in the end, their main strength and weapon was their sense of play. Siwu found himself without his shirt or shoes. Gritting his teeth tightly, he pushed away the monster's huge hand, which surprised old Babai. A purple glow radiated from the guy's arms and entire body. Siwu had suddenly lost weight, and now his body wasn't plump, but completely made up of muscle. He looked as if he had been going to the gym every day for several years. The monster was very surprised by this turn of events. If one is a goblin, then the talent is already present in the body as an instinct that no one has taught. Siwu felt the power. His eyes were filled with brightness, his teeth were clenched tightly, and he no longer felt any pain. With all his strength, he managed to push the big mouth goblin away, which flew to the side. Due to the powerful throw, this monster slammed into the ground with such force that it broke through the ground, resulting in a deafening crash. Siwu was standing next to a giant monster near a hand that was even bigger than himself. Young Siwu 17. His appearance used to be human, but now he's changed to a half-goblin. The boy stood with his face still covered in blood, still in his new body. The awakening was complete. The action was transferred from the world of monsters to the ordinary world. The tall guy asked, and then what happened? Siwu was at the grocery store with his friend. He lightly clutched the juice box in his hands and replied that it was all over later. His friend asked again, really? He replayed in his head what Siwu had described to him, imagining what was happening in front of his eyes. He said in surprise, what kind of delusional dream is this? The tall friend chewed on his food while looking at Siwa and said, well, judging from his face, he had a good time. Siwu closed his eyes wearily, put the juice box on the table, and said that there was nothing fun in it. He was beaten all the time, and all he could do was throw once. The guy looked out the window and before taking another bite of the food, said thoughtfully, It's strange that in his own dream he was beaten up. Usually, people in their dreams are doing something familiar. He said that Suwu never learned how to fight. He usually boxed to lose weight. Suwu looked at the drink with a tired look and said quietly that it was very strange. The dream was really bright. The image of him in his new form pushing away the giant goblin's hand appeared in front of his eyes. Siwu continued to think out loud that it was as if he knew what he needed to do from the very beginning. As if it would work even now if he wanted to do it again. 
His friend patted him on the shoulder after finishing his meal and asked if he was getting too involved in it. Siwoo looked at him irritably, clutching the juice tightly in his hands, and said, What is he talking about? Anyway, it's probably all due to stress. Was he so obsessed with losing weight even in his sleep? Why would the body suddenly become so muscular? Siwoo looked at himself and suddenly it seemed to him that his body looked the same as it did in the dream. But he wasn't just imagining it, because now he wasn't in the grocery store with his friend, but in that same monster world. Siwoo was looking at his toned body in shock, which even seemed like a stranger, when he suddenly heard a familiar voice that asked, has he regained his senses? Siwoo looked up and saw the same old man in front of him, with the blonde girl standing behind him. Babai scratched his beard and said that he thought Siwoo would wake up soon, since he fell asleep standing up. The guy turned his head sharply in different directions and whispered in a puzzled voice, This is not a dream. It was the same world with trees, mountains, pink lighting, and a huge, beautiful building in the middle of the square. He hadn't expected something like this. Siwoo stared at the goblin, still unconscious, and wondered how he had managed to take this freak down. Was he really hiding his power? It's not that, but that it still has goblin blood in it. It had been a long time since Babai had seen the goblin S serum. The old man swung his cane and said sharply that he, the monster judge of the peninsula, Babai, rated the candidate as promising. Dozens of red eyes stared down at them from the sky. The old man continued to speak, at the witness of a hundred monsters around and one here. He suddenly pointed the end of his cane at the huge big goblin and proudly declared that he was declaring Choi Siwa not a human. But a monster. If anyone is against it, they should say so now and spread the news around the world. Siwa couldn't believe what he was hearing. He continued to watch in amazement as a huge number of strange creatures stared at them. To accidentally meet a goblin, he needs to try very hard. This festival will be very interesting. The old man said that since Siwa had become a monster, his name would be added to the list. No one will be able to capture or harm it for no particular reason. The boy looked at the older man and answered hesitantly, sighing, yes, good, but he needs to go home. In his mind, he continued, what if there's no reason? The same blonde girl gave a voice and said, this is nonsense. Either he's pretending to be so stupid, or he really is a jerk. Hadn't he heard? He's a monster now. The stranger crossed her arms over her chest, looking at Siwa with her red eyes. She clearly stated that if the monster didn't prove its ability to completely hide its essence among humans, then the creature wouldn't be allowed to show itself in the human realm until 500 years old. Siwu turned his head in different directions, looking from the girl to the old man. He said hesitatingly that he wasn't a big problem. He never hit anyone, and he always lived peacefully. The old man grunted and said that if he didn't understand, he had no choice. He swung his cane sharply and shouted furiously, except kill him. Siwu felt a very strong push and felt like he was floating in the air. A few seconds later, he landed on the ground, only a few meters away from the old man and this girl. Still stroking his beard, the old man asked, Well, does he understand now? Whoever he thinks he is, he has the body of a monster. Siwu squatted down and thought. For a moment he thought his body shuddered. Babai lowered his gaze to the ground and spoke. Among the monsters, goblin abilities are definitely considered the best. Even if he is a newly awakened child, his strength surpasses that of a human by dozens of times and it can cripple an ordinary person just by touching him. Imagining the torn bodies in front of his face, Siwu anxiously lowered his gaze and said that he understood this, but waiting for 500 years to pass was nonsense. The old man hurried to reassure him and said that in reality, he only needed to wait for half a year. Siwu asked happily, right. Babai then replied, didn't he say that the monster king is chosen every 666 years? This 500-year ban was imposed by the current king. 666 years ago, an unknown guy ran as fast as he could through a dark forest that was already completely shrouded in night. Previously, all monsters were free to go out and leave the human realm. Trying to escape from one of the monsters, the guy all in tears ran away from the terrifying creature. That was exactly what people had to do, just run away. When monsters came, people were afraid or relied on the strongest monsters that lived among humans. The huge creature towered over the fallen boy who looked on in fear and ignored the blood running from his nose. Fear and worship, that's how people used to treat monsters, but at the end of the festival 666 years ago, the new king was somehow not happy about this fact. On the day he ascended the throne, the king wrote a new law in the blood of the monsters he killed. Because of the ban, they couldn't trust people or even contact them. Because of this, people have not been afraid of them for a long time. They don't even know that monsters exist. People think they're just fictional characters from fairy tales, but even that won't last long. 
Babai kept looking Sif straight in the eye and saying that in six months a new king would appear, and he would change everything. The law will be rewritten and on this day the sun will set in the kingdom of men. The moment that all monsters have been waiting for for 666 years will come, it will be the night of monsters. Monsters will all rush to people and awaken forgotten fear and horror in the souls of mankind. People will run away in desperation from unknown creatures that were previously only read about in fairy tales. Suwu listened to all this in shock and continued to stand quietly. In these six months, he either needs to wait out everything that happens, or learn how to control the force in order to do something. He already needs to decide for himself. After thinking for a while, Suwu asked about how he should control the force. And what if he learns how to do it? How strong does it take for the monsters to call him king? The old man asked what. For a second, he thought he saw Suwu make a confident expression. What was he up to? Suwu frowned at the elder, clenching his fists. The question that interested him the most was, what would happen to the world when the monsters appeared? Suwu replied to the old man that he was going to make sure that the monsters didn't touch the humans. It's hard for a 17-year-old to make promises, but one thing is clear, the world will become a much more dangerous place. At the very least, Suwu must protect all those who are dear to him. He was picturing his trusted friend and beloved mother when old Babai approached him and said that maybe all was not lost. The goblin blood in his veins is very strong. It may not be comparable to the blood of a pure-blooded goblin, but if it can properly use all its power, then no monster will dare to offend those it cares about. And although the probability of this happening is small, he never knows what might happen. If Siwu can win the festival and become the monster king, then the law can also extend it. The blonde girl sharply shouted, he shouldn't talk about the impossible. She continued to express her dissatisfaction in a dissatisfied tone, and said that although Siwu might not be the most lame monster, he didn't have a chance to win the festival, okay. The old man turned, frowning at the girl, and remembered that he hadn't introduced her yet. Let me tell you, her name is Selkva. Just like Siwu, she will participate in the festival for the sake of her people. Selva let out a frustrated sigh, tucking a lock of hair behind her ear, and asked why he needed to know her name. She would never see him again. Besides, Selva didn't come here for acquaintances. She shifted her gaze from the old man to the protagonist and addressed him, reminding him how he said he wanted to take the test of being able to return to humans, right? If he went back on his word, she would be angry. Babai closed his eyes, suppressing his irritation, and explained that Selva was in the same situation as Siwu. Despite her young age, she wants to get to people. The old man keeps putting it off because he's already too busy, but Selwa still wants to take this test. Suwu thought, didn't Babai say that monsters can get to humans in just half a year? Anyway, he looked at the annoyed Selwa, who frowned and pointed at herself. She proudly asked why she had to take this test in the first place. Transformation magic or monster power? There are a bunch of monsters weaker than her that have been dormant among humans for 500 years. Babai turned all the way to the girl and said he knew it. Therefore, it is difficult for him to understand how ready Selkva is. In order not to reveal yourself in front of people, you need to have not only basic skills, but also patience. Selwa furrowed her thin brows, crossed her arms over her chest, and said in a displeased tone that she understood what the old man was talking about. But she hopes it's not just an excuse not to deal with her. The old man stamped his foot and said, Nonsense. If it was just that, he wouldn't even have called her here. The festival is just around the corner and the old law is about to expire. Why would Babai listen to her whims when he was so busy? However, she was lucky, because the best opportunity to watch her get together with people will not be. This is her chance. The old man started to move away from them, leaving Siwa and Selwa behind. But he kept saying that as the nine-tailed fox had already understood Choi Siwa was a human and there was no judge better than him. She realized something and, widening her eyes, exclaimed, Wait, really? The old man glanced over his shoulder and finally said that he would give her until the end of the month. She must help deal with the monster's powers, including transformation magic. And if Babe sees that she has made enough progress in a month, then he will give them both the right to live in the human kingdom. Siwu thought this was his chance. It took Selwa a few seconds to understand what she was hearing, and then she poked her chest with her palm and fiercely exclaimed, Stop talking nonsense. What can she teach him in a month? She wished the old man had told her right away that he wouldn't give her permission. Babe calmly replied that if she thought so, then she could just wait six months. What's the big deal? A month earlier, a month later, what's the difference? Whether she leaves him or teaches him depends on her. Babe threw up his canvas and finally said that he personally thinks that everything is possible. 
The cloth enveloped the old man and teleported him to another place, leaving behind only a bright light that was blinding when looking at it. Selwa turned around and started to leave, saying that she knew it was a stupid question, but she would still ask if Siwu understood what the power of monsters was. Siwu was still standing at the back and answered hesitantly that he didn't know. Hearing this, the nine-tailed fox let out a disappointed sigh and said, Yes, it has no choice. Siwu's eyes widened as he watched, while Selwa calmly crossed her arms behind her back. At that moment, a huge, large-mouthed goblin was towering behind her. She asked Siwu, who was looking behind her, what was wrong with his face. The monster pointed a finger at the girl and said ominously, Little fox. Then the goblin turned to Sif and said, Little one, where did the old man go? The fight isn't over. Siwu stared at the monster in fright, and Selwa frowned and said, Ah, well, this monster is hanging on. Because of the likes of the big mouth goblin, people forgot about monsters. The goblin didn't like what he was hearing. His entire body was shaking with anger, and he furiously exclaimed, Fool. And then he tried to grab the girl with his huge hand to flatten her. Unlike humans, where race doesn't decide much, monsters don't. These creatures are completely different in strength and size. The difference among monsters is determined by the average potential and skills of each type, which is why classes appeared in the monster world. Now that the pureblood goblins are gone, there is a debate about which class is considered the strongest on the Korean peninsula. But if you put pride aside, many monsters will reluctantly agree on one thing. The big mouth goblin waved his hand and asked in surprise, what's wrong? These rabid beasts. Selwa grinned slyly. These nine-tailed foxes are considered the strongest of the monsters on the Korean peninsula. Selva narrowed her eyes ominously and asked him to continue. Between her and the eyeless monster, there were purple chains that gave off a faint glow. A series of surreal scenes flash before Siwu's eyes, but he doesn't moan in pain anymore, just looks around in surprise, remaining silent. Just standing there, frozen with surprise in his case is not the most appropriate option. The situation that he is facing requires that he accept it and be able to adapt. Selva looked askance at Siwa and said that he had seen it for himself. This is magic, the ability to absorb and use energy and forces. Siwa watched as a stream of purple glow moved from the goblin's hand towards her, enveloping her. Selva, meanwhile, went on to explain that there are two types of magic, unique and acquired. She is sure that Siwa already knows what unique magic is. An example was the Goblin S Serum a special ability for the goblin race that his blood remembers. You don't need to learn anything special to use it. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes as easy to apply as breathing. But in the case of acquired magic, this is not the case. Any monster can use it if they master it. This requires training and practice, not to mention the quality of the skill. Selwa pointed her thumb at the monster behind her and asked Siwu. He sees this guy, right? The big mouthed goblin didn't take the time to train, relying on its natural size and strength. And now he was humiliated with a simple binding spell. This was a clear example of creatures that were far below the Selwa level. The bound monster continued to tremble, unable to move. Selwa proudly continued to say, whatever it was, since it came to this, she would teach Siwa. We need to clarify everything right away. She does not like difficulties, so if the result is unsatisfactory, then she will not hold back her anger. So if Siwu is not ready, then you should immediately give up. For someone who was human a few minutes ago, this will be very difficult. Siwu listened carefully, looked down, and remained silent. Selwa said that if he disappointed her, he might die. Siwu then raised his bold gaze to the girl and said, Even so, if she taught him, he would do whatever he could or die trying. Selwa frowned, raising her hand to her chin and thinking. While Siwu was telling her that he needed to learn by all means, right now, he can't afford to worry about the future. Then Selwa grinned and agreed, saying, Okay. He probably won't be able to handle it, but it's better than not trying at all. Unexpectedly, she suggested that we eat first. The guy asked in surprise, shall we eat? Selwa waved her right hand and a purple flame appeared from her palm. Just like she said, magic consumes energy and power, the power of all the inhabitants of the monster world. Selva looked down at her hand and the glowing stream of flame that was turning her blonde hair purple. Selva said that many things will not be available to Sif right now. It is usually gained when he breathes air and eats food in the world of monsters. However, Siwu had just arrived in their world. With the normal diet of the human world, nothing can be gained, so all he has now is his innate strength. Siwu thought back to his earthly life, eating rice, fish, meat, and other dishes with both cheeks. Selwa asked with a smile, he's hungry, isn't he? After all, after trying so hard, he must be hungry. Then Siwu shyly scratched his neck and looked away a little, saying, no, well, he wasn't that hungry. And then Siwu felt a sudden pain all over his body that made his eyes widen. 
He could feel his hands twisting uncomfortably, and beads of sweat were running down his face. Siwu was trembling. A question came out from his bitten lips, what? Selwa continued to stand under the monster's chained hand and stare at Siwu's shaking body. Selwa reproached him, but she said he didn't have enough power. Siwu continued to tremble in pain, remembering how he had pushed the giant goblin's hand away. Selva threw his body a few meters away from her, and then said that there was only a drop left. The previous mess had ruined everything. Selvi was referring to the moment when Siwu's powers were awakened and he pushed the goblin away from him. This is usually the case with the Force. Selva walked over to the main character, stroking his back, while Siwu wrapped his arms around her, hunched over and barely able to stand. Selva said that the solution to this problem is simple. She leaned close to Siwu's ear and put her hand on his shoulder, saying, Can he see that guy? She pointed at the large-mouthed monster that was still wrapped in magic chains. There are rules among monsters. If the referee declares the winner of the duel, the life and death rights of the loser will be in the hands of the winner. After pausing with a sinister expression, she flashed her red eyes and whispered that Suwu needed to eat the loser to gain his power. This is the most efficient and easiest way. What he heard made the protagonist's eyes widen. Goblin also heard everything that Selva said and it made him tremble even more, and Selva said that with such a size, Siwu would quickly eat, and hunger would immediately go away. At that moment, Siwu went forward on instinct. For the first time in his life, he felt a demonic hunger that was only fueled by the nine-tailed fox's whisper. She stood contentedly watching from the sidelines, and all that was in Siwu's mind was the idea of the predator's power over its prey. But there was something Selva hadn't thought of. The fact that the greedy goblin nature always aims to catch a bigger and tastier victim. The realization came to her when Suwu suddenly stopped and looked over his shoulder at her with sparkling eyes. She opened her eyes feeling the danger, and Suwu meanwhile began to run at her and then Selva said to pay attention to his behavior. She swiped her fingers and the small ball of energy turned into a huge stream of magic. Selva said that no matter how hungry he was, he shouldn't be so impudent. The chains made up of her magic wrapped around Siwu's body just like they did with the big mouth goblin earlier. Selva straightened a lock of hair that was sticking out of her eyes and asked irritably, Does an annoying monster like him really think he can eat her? Did he find her an easy target? Siwu examined the chains that were gripping his body and continued to listen to what Selva was saying. She said that he should be taught good manners, however, at this moment, Siwu felt a surge of strength with which he broke the chains with ease. Selva watched with wide-eyed surprise, wondering if he had broken the chain just by the force of his hand. There was a bright flash of magic and Siwu said, yes, touching her index finger, Selva felt the excitement playing out. She said, even if it was only half, a goblin was a goblin. Selva abruptly tore out her fingernail and said with a flame in her eyes, okay, she admits it. At that moment, Siwu smelled the smell of blood and rushed at the girl but she started to make circles in the air with her bloody finger. This is a summon, blessed by the great demon king, one fist. Suddenly, a giant red fist appeared out of thin air next to Selwa. Siwu didn't expect this and tried to slow down, but he didn't have time and ended up getting hit by a palm. This caused it to fly a long distance away from Selwa and with a strong crash, it crashed into the wall, piercing right through it. Flashes of bright light flashed everywhere. Selwa's voice rang out, asking if he was still alive. Siwa was leaning forward from the attack he received. Selva tried to see the main character through the pink smoke and glow and said, Well, even if he's dead, what can I do? He asked for her death when he attacked her. She hadn't expected much from, but Selwa didn't finish the sentence. She hadn't expected much from him, but the fact that he had awakened even among the powerful goblins was surprising. Siwa stood even more formidable, terrifying, and powerful than usual. His eyes were black with red pupils, and a scarlet sharp horn protruded from his forehead. There were a huge number of goblins, but only a few were endowed with unique magic as rare as it was powerful. Siwu grabbed onto his horn and easily broke off part of it. It has the makings to become a symbol of the goblin race. Siwu clenched a piece of his horn in his palm. It turned into a huge weapon that glowed with black and red magic. Selwa watched the whole thing without fear, crossing her arms over her chest, and said that for a half-finished goblin, he was pretty good. Siwu stood there, still wrapped in a new energy. His eyes were filled with rage. The broken horn continued to glow, and now he had access to a new unique magic called Goblin Club. Selva was an outstanding monster, a genius that obtained nine tails before even reaching the age of a hundred, a talent that had been passed down in the Korean Peninsula Demon Fox family for one thousand years, so she could feel it so clearly. Selva knew how dangerous this thing 
The Goblin Club was, even though it was the first time she had seen it. She thought that if we only talk about the amount of power of the monsters, then she wouldn't lose. But what is this phenomenon? Siwu swung the baton that was shrouded in bright energy. He stamped his foot, and Selva, sensing the danger, frowned. Siwu rushed forward. Being enveloped by the strongest energy, it was the transformation of the goblin baton, thunderclap. Selva defended herself, because she couldn't afford to be hit. There was a roar, flashes of lightning blinding my eyes. Selva stood there, feeling the ground shake under her feet, and said softly, yes, that's how a goblin club feels. At this time, Siwu was filled with the most powerful energy, every muscle in his body swollen with tension as he gripped the club in his hands. He swung the weapon once more, intending to stab the girl, who had her arms crossed in front of her chest, all but the index and middle fingers curled up. She frowned, prepared to defend herself, and said what it meant, and she needed to show what she could do. Then Siwu waved his hand, and Selwa used her huge red fist again, which was endowed with special power. A single word escaped her lips, boom. The red fist caught the goblin's club, and there was another burst of energy that made it difficult to see what was happening. Selwa stood quietly, her red hand now lying separately clutching the end of the goblin club. Well, that wasn't enough. She was thinking that if she thought about the incredible self-control she had just seen, she would have to hit C five or six times until he came to his senses. The huge red hand continued to struggle with the goblin's club. Something made her open her eyes wide and feel the danger again, as well as the tension in her entire body. At this moment, Siwu continued to show what he was capable of and fight against the red hand, which surprised the girl. Selva thought that she couldn't believe what she was seeing. Even though he's only up against one hand, how can he fight against the demon king? Siwu stayed where he was, guiding the goblin's baton deftly as his eyes continued to glow with red flames and it seemed like he was beside himself with rage, a tool that freely changes shape according to the owner's will and desire. Siwu slung the club over his shoulder as purple tendrils of energy continued to spread across his body. That's why in the past, when goblins lived and flourished, monsters called the goblin club a weapon that could be anything. At that moment, a transformation occurred. Siwu swung his club, hitting the huge red hand. Selwa wondered if the form and method of attack might have changed so that she wouldn't be able to counterattack. If you put the power of the club aside, the ratio of magic price to combat power is simply ridiculous. At this point, Selva decided to call for a second hand to help. She continued to think that instead of giving him the space to use brute force, she should use the Demon King's deception. Double chaotic clap. At this moment, many hands flew towards Siwu, who didn't expect this. He was trying to swing his goblin club away, and he was very good at it. Then Selwa scratched the back of his head and grudgingly admitted that he was still holding on. Seriously, even those who have lived for 100 years or 200 years won't be his match. It's clear why goblins are so good. Zilu was getting more furious and stronger by the second. Selva thought that if the half-breed who had just opened his eyes a few minutes ago was already at this level. But it doesn't seem to matter how favorable the price-power ratio is. It looked like his magic had reached its limit. If they continued like this, he would just tear his body apart. Selva sighed heavily and whispered, What can I do? She didn't seem to care about him at all. Siwu swung his club as he continued to fend off the fox's attack, and Selwa snapped her fingers and said, Three tails, no, five. She began to draw circles in the air above her head, saying furiously that she had every reason to be proud. Siwu continued to show off his incredible abilities, but the girl didn't care anymore. She said it didn't matter that it was his first time. An enemy with such strength can be considered a worthy opponent. She stared at her enemy with pink fire in her eyes. Deception of the Great Demon King, the top part. Siwu ran, swinging the goblin club over his head. Behind her, half of the huge creature's body was towering. It was a man with a long beard and even longer hair, and there was a white flame in his eyes. In his hand, he was clutching a weapon, with which the man was able to defeat Siwa with a single swing. The guy was lying on the ground, breathing heavily, and Selva hesitantly said, Stupid, is she late? She was sorry, but he was going to die soon. Siwu lay there and felt tears and beads of sweat roll down his dirty cheeks. Selva said that the collapse caused by magical exhaustion had already begun, but it was his fault. He understands that, doesn't he? Once he was such a fool that he didn't know his place and couldn't stop even when his body started to fail. Selva walked over to the exhausted Sif and crossed her arms over her chest, looking down on him. She kept saying that she thought Grandpa would scold her a lot. At this time, Siwu began to cry harder, and a stream of salty tears ran down his cheeks, 
and he said the word mama in a trembling voice. Selva was fighting inside with herself, but still gave up and said, seriously. She put one hand to her head and the other to the boy. From her palm, a purple glow formed, which enveloped the injured Siwu's body and helped him get to his feet. A second later, Selva wrapped one hand around the boy's head and brought it to her, kissing the hero on the lips and giving him some of the energy. After stopping doing so, she spat and said irritably that of the five tails and the fox pearl magic that she had recently obtained. If Suu didn't live up to her expectations, then he would get serious from her. Selva wiped her lips and looked at the boy who was lying on the ground without any pain or tears on his face. After a while, he opened his eyes and jumped up, suddenly finding himself not on the damaged ground, but on a soft bed in an unfamiliar room. Siwu started looking around, trying to figure out where he was. He asked, is this? The door opened and Selva came in with a scowl, carrying a small tray with a white cup. Siwu looked up at her, smiling awkwardly and already looking much better than before. In the white cup that Selva brought, there was a purple drink. Siwu looked at it with an awkward face and said that he was very sorry. He remembers everything he did, but he doesn't know how it happened. Even though Siwu was fully aware of what was happening, he couldn't control his body. Right now, he was very ashamed to look at the nine-tailed fox who was sitting right in front of him with her arms crossed. Siwu clutched the fabric of his pants in frustration and said that whatever it was, he was very sorry. Selva was just trying to help, but he put her in danger. The fox ignored Siwu's apology and ordered him to drink in a commanding voice. Siwu was surprised. He abruptly raised his head and asked again, what? Selwa pointed at the cup of drink with a straight face and once again told her to drink it before it got cold. Suwu didn't argue, but obediently took the cup in his hands, bringing it to his face, and said, Yes, ma'am. Thanks for the drink. A question popped up in his head, is this some kind of traditional medicine? Suwu took a hesitant sip and instantly tasted the disgusting taste of the strange drink. When he covered his mouth with his hand, Selwa said that if he spat it out, she would beat him up. Siwu quickly nodded his head, swallowing hard, and then he asked what it was made of. The nine-tailed fox looked at him without emotion and said, Who knows this information? It won't help him finish his drink. The fox will not feel sorry for him, so he needs to drink and listen while he does it. With a tremor in his body, Siwu continued to swallow the strange liquid, frowning at the nasty taste. Selwa said that Siwu forgets something important in the first place. The big mouth goblin must have escaped while they were fighting. Well, it still rightfully sieves. After a few seconds of silence, Selva said that the monster must have hidden somewhere and curled up in a ball for the next hundred years, because the big mouth goblin knows what will happen if it is caught. When Suwu finished the disgusting drink and wiped the drops from his mouth, the fox said that it was a perfect snack for a half-breed like him. It looked like he had missed the prey that was already in his mouth. Suwu felt annoyed and asked, Isn't there any other way? Selva grinned and asked, Any other way? It's amazing that he still considers himself human. If Siwu isn't willing to hurt others to become stronger, then he won't. Siwu was clutching a cup that had a few drops of liquid left in it, and said that he still didn't realize that he would have to kill or eat monsters. And it's true that he doesn't want to do this, but honestly, whatever these creatures are, for Siwu, they are all dangerous monsters that threaten people. If he doesn't do everything right, then in a few months, the people he cherishes will suffer seriously. If he needs to kill, then he will kill. If he needs to eat, then he will eat monsters. At that moment, his gaze stopped being uncertain, but instead filled with anger. As he said before, he will do what he can. Siwu looked straight into the eyes of the fox, who had stopped frowning, and explained that he had asked if there was another way, not because he wasn't going to eat it. He asked just in case there were other options. Gathering her thoughts, Selwa replied that just as she had told him, the most effective way to increase her monster power was to eat other monsters. However, this is usually only possible in the case of a duel that both participants have agreed to. Siwu is a special case, and since it doesn't go against the rules, the weak ones will be caught and eaten. These are not tenants. Besides, there will be no more easy prey. Even if he is a half-breed, many monsters have seen that he is a goblin who has some S-serum skills, and rumors about him have spread all over the area. Those that Siwu can easily defeat won't fight him. On the contrary, others will come after him, those with whom he cannot cope at the current level. Siwu imagined a giant monster several times its size and strength next to you, and he felt goosebumps on his body. Meanwhile, the fox continued, saying that if someone lost a pheasant, they should at least cook themselves a chicken, right? Selva stood up, smiled, pointed behind her, and told me to follow her, because she had a present for Siwu. They went out into the street, where the sky was covered with a purple-pink glow as before. Siwu looked around and hesitantly started to say, and the gift. 
He paused as he saw behind the fox a bound monster with ears like a wolf's, sharp fangs sticking out, and wild eyes flashing. Selwa crossed her arms behind her back with a proud smile and asked, Does the main character like the monster? Pretty good, huh? Sewu still wasn't used to this. He said indistinctly, Is this a monster? Selva replied, Well, yes and no. Technically, it lost its right to be called a monster. Everyone has their own reasons, but a lot of them lose their minds and give themselves up completely to their instincts. Just like what happened with Siwu recently, right? Selwa chuckled as she recalled the situation that happened earlier. She said that, however, when monsters aren't as lucky as Sif was, and they do something irreparable, such creatures are called beasts, not monsters, and are denied special rights. Dry throats, as they are called on the Korean peninsula. The fox paused for a few seconds, looking at Siwa, and asked with a smirk, why is he staring so hard? She'd already told him, hadn't she? This is a beast that has lost its mind. Now it was clear why the creature had such wild eyes. Siwa continued to examine the dun throat carefully. The chains that had previously bound this animal were now gone, so the frenzied creature began to flap its paws, hitting the ground, which caused bright flashes of light. Siwa dodged just in time, doing it so fast that he barely noticed. The fox sat to the side and thought that at first she thought Siwa was frozen in confusion and was about to be beaten, but he was using his body better than she expected. The fox had underestimated him, even so, it's likely that Siwu is just trying to delay the fight as much as possible. At this time, Dreisglot continued to wave his hands, and Siwu took a defensive stance. Selwa reasoned in her head that the beast's enemy was descended from the fire dog family and had earned a good name, but because of his insatiable pride, he wanted to represent the family at the festival. As a result, he was accused of kidnapping and eating monsters. He surpassed his limit, couldn't handle the power of the monsters, and went crazy. The beast's eyes were now even crazier than before, and its pupils were looking in different directions. The creature clenched its fists tightly, trying to hit Siwa with one of them, but Siwa was very agile and jumped out of the way in time. Suddenly, the beast decided to bite Siwa with a loud snap of its huge teeth, and Siwa had nowhere to crawl to escape. Vixen rested her chin on her hand in boredom and thought that just as she had expected, Siwu couldn't consciously use a club. She certainly hadn't expected anything else. Selwa doesn't think Siwu will win this fight. And even though the opponent is crazy, it's still a level higher in strength. Drizhiglot continued to try to deal damage to the main character, but with its mouth open and tongue hanging out, it rushed at Siwa. In her mind, Selva said that what's more, the part of S serum that focuses on throwing and fighting won't work against him. This is a cruel but effective method to awaken his instinct, which only wakes up when Siwu is on the verge of death. But the fox was surprised to see Siwu's eyes light up with that same purple light. He took a different stance, preparing to attack, and clenched his fists tightly. The fox was perplexed, and exactly a second later, Siwu swung his right fist and slammed it down hard on Drizhiglot, who flew off to the side. The action was transferred to the real world, namely to the sports center. Someone said, wow. It was the coach who looked at his student and said that Siwu was much tougher than he thought. After a second, he tried to justify himself by asking for forgiveness and saying that honestly, because Siwu said that his goal was to lose weight, he didn't expect Siwu to be so good. Did he never want to take boxing seriously? The schoolboy stood there, feeling the sweat trickle down his face, and didn't know what to say. He said that when he lost the weight, he would think about it. The man asked again, wait. Well, he will throw it off with himself if he constantly studies. The coach offered to train for six months. If Siwu wants to, then the man can help with his diet and exercise, because with such skills he will reach the competition. The coach patted the student on the shoulder and reassuringly said that the excess weight, of course, will also fly off the body, of course. The schoolboy looked down at the floor and said sheepishly, yeah. He thought it would be nice if boxing had an effect. Siwu recalled his muscular, toned body in the monster world and found himself here again, next to a rabid beast. Unlike other martial arts practitioners, Siwu's goal wasn't physical strength or fighting ability. He just wanted to lose weight. Siwu used both hands to launch punches at Drizhiglot, who didn't have time to defend himself. The hero remembered how he weighed himself and saw the number 97, 2 on the scale. His usual, simple, but desperate wish, despite his constant efforts, never came true. However, he didn't give up. Siwu threw a powerful kick at the monster, which flew to the side. The beast's frenzied eyes glowed red, and there were traces of blows on its body. Since elementary school, Siwu had practiced 16 sports, seven of which were combat sports, 
and although he didn't train for long and his weight didn't go away, the goblin's effort and natural talent made him perfectly absorb all the skills from those seven sports. Ziwu's eyes completely lit up with purple flames, and then he threw another punch at the beast, which lost a few fangs. The nine-tailed fox jumped up, opened its eyes in surprise, and shouted, How can I explain this? She was shocked by what she saw. Siwu stood next to the defeated beast and scratched his hair awkwardly. He asked quietly, But how should he eat it now? The beast was lying on the ground, unconscious, with almost black blood flowing from its mouth, and a blow mark was visible on its muzzle. Siwu stood next to Ito, looking at his hands, and couldn't believe that he was able to overcome the mesenchimus on his own. Selva was still sitting on the roof, watching. She wondered if it was martial arts. The fox hoped it wasn't an innate power. After all, this technique was invented by humans, so it's no good against the bodies and power of monsters. Selva thought that Suu had only recently obtained the monster's body, but in real combat, he was able to quickly figure out and apply his skills. His potential was far greater than the fox had thought. She scratched her chin thoughtfully and asked herself what to do now. Suu looked from the beast to Selwa and said that he thought he had won so far. He didn't have to eat the beast completely to prove what she said. Then the fox did not let Sif finish and said, of course not. She smirked and suggested that we talk about it when Suu finally won. Suu was surprised, didn't he win yet? Suddenly, something grabbed him from behind, and he felt sharp claws and teeth digging into his body, piercing him until he bled. The beast picked up Siwa and threw him aside, causing the hero to writhe and tremble on the ground in pain. Redneck snapped his bloody fangs and glared furiously at his opponent. Siwa looked at the spot that the beast had just bitten and saw that it was missing part of its shoulder. This brought terror to Siwa's face, and he trembled even more. Before Siwa knew it, he received another powerful blow and flew back with sparks. The blood flowed harder and harder. Selwa drew her bent legs up to her chest, hugged it, and sighed in frustration. She's sure they'll have plenty of time after Siwu responds to the beast. The main reason people are afraid of getting hurt is not because of the pain. They are afraid of loss, fear that a body part will either be deformed or completely lost. This is one of the innate fears that are inherent in all living beings called humans. This is enough to cause a 17-year-old boy to have a panic attack. But that didn't happen now. Siwu looked at his previously injured shoulder, which was suddenly starting to heal right in front of his eyes. He wondered what. This distracted Siwu and he missed the beast's attack again, which swung and clawed at Siwu's chest. There were now bleeding wounds. Siwu was trembling, but he continued to stand on his feet. The damaged areas of the skin began to heal again, and after a few seconds, no wounds could be seen on the body. The beast once again waved its paw, but now Siwu was able to dodge the blow. There are so many differences between humans and monsters that even counting is useless. But if you point out the main ones, it will be endurance and recovery of the body as well as the difference in thinking that results from this. Siwu prepared to attack, glaring at his enemy with fierce eyes. If the monster isn't dead or mortally wounded, then the injuries don't mean anything. When this is understood, the limitations of the subconscious mind aimed at protecting the body disappear and the limits of physical abilities are greatly increased. Right now, Suu's fist was sparkling with purple magic, and his pupils were white. He swung his arm back to give Driglot a blow with all his might, to avenge the fact that it had dared to bite him. The beast flew dozens of meters away from the main character. It smashed into the ground with such force that a dazzling white light was formed around it. Siwu's fist sparkled with energy. Siwu stared at the unconscious beast on the ground and thought about how his arm hurt like it was about to break. But it was worth it. The blows were much stronger compared to what was before. The impact of a simple punch can be compared to a car flying into it at full speed. But Siwu isn't the only one who can recover here, and if you think about what happened here, it won't surprise him anymore. A fox appeared nearby and climbed down from the roof and said that it was enough now. The punches turned out well, both in place and strength. Although the beast won't die, it won't be able to recover quickly. After a pause of a few seconds, she continued to speak, asking him what he thought of the feeling of not losing his mind and consciously using magic for the first time in his life. Siwu was very surprised. He opened his eyes and pointed at himself asking, Did he use magic? Siwu didn't do anything. Selwa looked at him expressionlessly and replied that magic wasn't such a big deal. Even if it's not high level, it can be applied in many ways. Did she ask if Siva understood her? His body recovered quickly because he was using magic, even if he didn't control it yet. And his last strike was the result of magic added to his physical strength. The fox asked if Siwu felt anything other than being hit hard. Siwu looked at his hand, which now looked normal, and said that he wasn't sure, but he thought there was something similar to a static current. 
The fox replied that if he wasn't lying, it was probably magic. Due to the fact that he has little experience, he cannot feel it exactly. Selwa forced him to fight just because of his experience. She waved her hand and a faint glow formed around her finger. The fox said that because the fight was bloody and he was trying to win, he subconsciously used magic. She also admitted that she was still a little surprised. Selwa waved her finger, which caused the limp body of the beast to fly into the air and approach her. She thought that Siwa would be stuck around for 10 days while she started figuring things out. She complimented him and admitted that Siwu was quite talented, much more talented than the fox thought. Siwu was embarrassed, scratching his ear. When the beast got close to the end, Selva said that it was time to finish. She looked at him. He said he was ready, right. She thinks it's an inappropriate question, but still, has he killed before? Then Selva said that it would be better for both of them if Siwu finished off the monster with a single blow. Otherwise, it will just injure it and the beast will kick. Siwu shifted his gaze to the crippled body of the trembling beast. The fox said to blow it over the navel. For most humanoid monsters, this is a weak spot. A place where creatures store their energy. Siv needs to gather his magic and put it into one hit. Selva could see Siwu hesitating. He took a tentative step forward and exhaled heavily, so she said it was hard the first time and that too. The hero gathered all his will into a fist, tensed up and began to prepare for the blow. When someone is trying to gain weight, even if they kill and devour everyone in their path, and whatever their excuses and reasons, few people will hesitate. Siwu was gaining confidence, his fist once again starting to sparkle with purple magic. He recalled a recent walk with his friend, as well as a photo with his beloved mother, to recharge his courage. Siwu clenched his teeth tightly and hit the beast above its navel with all his might, so hard that a stream of blood flew out of that body. Crossing her arms over her chest, the fox asked Siwu, he grabbed something in his fist, right. She asked me to open my palm, which turned out to be a purple ball. Selwa explained that this is the inner cinnabar, the place where magic is stored. It's also called the magic pearl. If Siwu swallows it, the owner's magic will become his. Siwu tossed the pearl into his mouth without hesitation and swallowed it. Small pink sparks formed around it. He looked down at his body, which looked the same as before and thought about what he had swallowed as she said, but nothing happened to him. Strangely, a black bird appeared on his shoulder out of nowhere, which reported that something like an explosion would normally occur once the pearl was swallowed. Siwu was startled and suddenly threw the bird off his shoulder, shouting, what is it? Then the black little bird flapped its wings and suddenly looked like a human. The fox frowned and asked, what's she doing here? Selva was sure that the girl, who was still unknown to Siwu, had nothing to do with her. Then the bird girl said what a pity. Two friends need a reason to meet. Although the fox is right, she came because she has a job to do. She looked at the main character and asked, so he's the half-goblin that everyone is talking about. It was nice to meet her. Her name was Sol Mai, and she was a childhood friend of Selwa's. Siwu bowed uncertainly as he looked at the new acquaintance and said that it was a pleasure to meet her. He said his name, Choi Siwu, and the fox looked at the girl with a displeased look and asked, what's the matter? Then Mai replied that as far as they know, she works part-time for Babai. Nine-tailed fox asked, part-time, how's that? Her friend replied that this is what people say, and it means sometimes. Siwu studied Mai carefully and thought about what she was doing, the way she spoke, and something else that seemed familiar. Mai looked at her childhood friend and said that since Selwa caught these two demons, she came instead of Babai to give out the reward. The nine-tailed fox sighed, placed her hand on her thigh, and with her eyes closed, said that she didn't need it, it was better to give the reward to Sif. After all, it was he who defeated them alone, and therefore deserved it. Mai approached Siwu and confessed that she knew. She has seen everything from the very beginning and Siwu is very impressive. Mai couldn't believe that he had been human just a short time ago. So can something unexpected happen at the festival? Mai shifted her gaze to her friend and asked her, Siwu can become Selwa's rival, right? Vixen hesitantly replied that she didn't think so. What festival? Siwa would be defeated as soon as he set foot there. Mai started to look up at the main character again, looking up at him since she was shorter than him. She said it was interesting. She felt that Siwu had potential. Mai approached him about his award and said that she would give him a choice. Now the main character had to decide what to take, the chance to go home right now or the chance to become a stronger monster. She asked what Siva would choose. The action was transferred to the school, which is located in the ordinary world. Someone shouted, what's going on, Choi Siwu? It was the same friend who was talking to the main character on the phone. He put his hand in his pants pocket and said indignantly that Siwu didn't show up at school and his phone was turned off. He picked up the phone when an unfamiliar number called because he thought it was Siwu. 
a friend asked if something was wrong with the main character. Siwoo clutched the phone in his hand and replied that he would like to say no, but it would be a lie. The guy exclaimed, what? Siwoo then exhaled and told Yushin that he had a crazy request for him. Siwoo had said that if Yushin couldn't, he would understand. But then Siwoo corrected himself by saying that he couldn't. In fact, he wouldn't understand Yushin because only he could help him. Yushin rolled his eyes and asked me to quickly tell him what was going on. Siwoo said a lot of things to clarify the situation, but ended up being deafened by a shout from the phone. Yushin asked what? What is Siwoo even saying? Where is he now? Siwoo took the phone away from his ear because his friend was shouting too loudly. He stammered out that he had some unforeseen circumstances there just now. His mother will be very scared if she finds out that he just disappeared without a trace for a month. Siwoo clarified, does the Yushin family have a traditional martial arts training center in Andong? Is he right? Siwoo asked Yushin to tell his mom that he went there to lose weight. Yushin exhaled heavily and said hesitantly that he thought Siwoo knew that they didn't take everyone there in a row. Siwoo said he understood that. It sounds like nonsense, and he understands Yushin. Siwoo knew that his friend was uncomfortable, but he had no other choice so he asked Yushin for a favor. Yushin closed his eyes wearily and massaged it, then said, okay. Then he asked Siwa something in return. Siwoo said he couldn't talk about the reason. However, if Siwoo acts like this because he thinks Yushin won't believe him, then he can speak up and not be afraid. Because who knows, maybe he can help his friend. Siwoo looked at Mai, who was sitting in front of him with her index finger pressed to her mouth to keep him quiet. She said that Siwoo can lie, but it's against the rules to divulge their existence. Even she would be punished with him for that. Siwoo listened to Mai and didn't tell his friend anything. Yushin said, disappointed, yes, good. If something happens and he can help, then Siwoo can safely call him. Yushin ended the call while looking at his phone and thought out loud that it looked like his friend had lied to him, right. Siwoo let out a sigh of relief, even though he was ashamed to cheat. He recalled recent events. When Mai gave him two chances to choose from, he exclaimed, is she saying that he can come back right now? But Siwoo had heard that this was only possible if you passed the test. Mai agreed, yes, it is. However, she wasn't going to lie to him. If Siwoo really wants to go back, then she can send him to the human world right now. Silva also heard what her friend was saying, so she rolled her eyes and let out an exasperated sigh. Mai was in a hurry, so, what will Siva choose? To his surprise, Siwoo said, okay, he'll leave here in a month after he passes the test. Mai opened her eyes wide and asked, right, why is that? Siwoo lowered his sad gaze to the ground, saying that if he didn't properly train now, something worse would happen than not being able to return home. This fight that had recently taken place with the beast only convinced him of this. Siwoo clenched his fist in anger and said that he needed strength to deal with such situations. That was why he decided that it would be better to strengthen his monster abilities. It's the right thing to do. Siwoo glanced at Mai, who was looking at him with stars in her eyes and covering her mouth with her hand. She whispered, that's cool. What he just said sounds so cool. Selva was getting more and more angry. She frowned and asked her friend, is she having fun? Is Mai teasing a guy with a choice that doesn't exist? She just has to give him a reward and that's it. The fox turned to Siwoo, stopped frowning, and said that this could not be a reward and Siwoo was a fool. This is a bad habit of thinking, deceiving others, and evaluating. Mai cleared her throat and began to justify herself, saying that they call it a test to understand the creature's personality and attitude. People get to know each other by asking similar questions. She asked Siwoo, he had read the book she gave him last time, right? Siwoo looked at her a little surprised and thought, that's right, this Selwa. Starting with the way she speaks and ending with the atmosphere, it's different from the other monsters, as if Siwoo knows it. The nine-tailed fox asked in displeasure, is my talking about that stupid theory? It was so simple and stupid that Selva couldn't even manage a couple of pages. Mai pursed her lips and told Vixen that she did it personally for her so that Selva would understand. If she wants to become a human, then she needs to at least learn the basics. Mai looked sad. She closed her eyes and said that no matter what, she had to take Siwa somewhere, okay. She had thought about this from the very beginning. Siwoo pointed a finger at himself in surprise, trying to see if he had heard correctly. Selva emotionlessly told Mai to do as she wanted. Then the bird girl waved the sleeves of her clothes and dark purple feathers flew in the direction. There were claps and Mai completely transformed into a black bird. She was a demonic crow. Mai said that nothing is impossible, right? She's a monster who has the power to move between the human world and this one. But that was probably only on the condition that she was responsible for everything that would happen there. For one day every six months, Mai has the right to take the monster that failed the test to the human world. 
Siwa will probably be sick, but she thinks he can handle it, right? Siwa could hardly believe what he was hearing. What? Mai flew into the air with a final warning that she would be back soon. Siwu handed Mai the gadget and thanked her for lending him the phone. Thanks to her, he was able to calm down a little. Mai was rocking back and forth in an overstuffed chair and said she was glad to have helped. But is Siwu really sure that just one call to a friend is enough for him? There's still some time left, doesn't Siwu want to see the family? Siwu lowered his head sadly and confessed that he only had his mother, and even then she was on a business trip. In fact, it's even easier for him. If someone was at home, there would be a big scandal. Mai stopped smiling. She held the phone up to her face and thought about something. Siwu then asked what Mai wanted to eat. It wasn't exactly payback, but he would have bought her dinner. Mai thought about it, didn't she? Super. Mai happily got up from her chair and confessed that she had always wanted to try something. Ever since her first visit to the human world, it had been difficult for her to get hold of it, so she hadn't had a chance to try it until that day. Siwu looked up at her, still sitting, and asked, what is it? Mai hesitantly asked if he knew. They ended up at Siwu's house, who now had several dishes to prepare. Soon the table was filled with dishes of appetizers, soup, and meat. Everything looked very appetizing, but Siwu was still hesitant. He said he'd set the table for everyone at home, but was she sure she'd like that? Mai happily exclaimed, yes. She is very happy because she has been wanting home-cooked food for a long time. All the human food she tried had to be bought by herself or eaten at school. Siwu asked again, at school. Then Mai replied that she goes to school after all. Does he know Hajun's school? Siwu was surprised then, wasn't he? It's near his school. She admitted that she has been going there since the beginning of this year, but she has no close friends who could treat her at home. Siwu was probably the first person she visited. The hero chewed the food, slurping, and thought that it seemed to him that someone like her should have a lot of friends. I think he was wrong. After a while, when everything was finished, Siol Mai thanked her for the prepared food. She said that it was very tasty for her and this food is not at all like dishes from a restaurant. Mai waved her finger and an unknown object appeared in the air, and she said that she needed to give Sif the reward she was talking about. This scroll that floats in the air is called the Monster Inventory. The name is a bit misleading, but it's something like a bag and phone for monsters. She opened the scroll and drew something on it, then said that just as she had just done, Siwu was free to summon it. They can also show you what they want by simply swiping your finger, just like on your phone. Siwu watched what Mai was showing in surprise and fascination. She said it was inside, reached right into the scroll, and pulled out a strange box. Mai said that this is where Siwu can store things and take them whenever he wants. He can carry everything with him and not think about the size. Yes, and other uses will also be found. As he begins to use his inventory, he will quickly figure it out. Mai handed the box to the protagonist and he accepted it by lifting the lid. Mai began to describe what lay inside. In the middle was the inventory that Siwu would use. The pile of coins on the left is goblin face coins. This is a currency that is highly valued in the monster world, and the 40 coins that he has earned is a large amount that he should use wisely. And finally, on the right, goblin treasures that change hands. Treasures are things that gain different abilities if you pour the power of monsters into them. Mai created a hologram of various devices in the air. For example, a fan, a saber, and a mysterious jug. She pointed it out and asked if Siwu knew how to play in the old fairy tales. People have magical items that appear out of nowhere. Usually, only coins are counted for defeating Drizhiglot, but Babai packed all this personally for Siwu. The old man seems to have big plans for him. Siwu pondered and asked again, big plans. It's about the award at the festival, right? On the one where the king of monsters is chosen. Siol Mai replied, of course. And while they don't have it as well as humans, monsters also have a concept of homeland. If the monster of the Korean peninsula becomes king, then it will be something to brag about. Moreover, this is their sore spot from the last festival. Siwu asked, did the monster from the Korean peninsula almost become a king? Mai said yes. From what she heard, he held on until the end and that the fight with the monster king was even. Siwu was upset. It's a pity that it didn't work out. Siol Mai agreed. And what's more interesting, this monster was also a goblin. Just like Siwu, Siwu clutched the goblin treasures in his hands and opened his eyes wide. Mai said that of course it was so strong that none of the Korean monsters could handle it. Siwu shifted his gaze from Mai to the treasure and hesitantly began to say that even if that was the case, he didn't know that he was a monster until yesterday. To be honest, there's still a part of him that doesn't believe what's going on. Every minute, he is ready to wake up from all this, like from a bad dream. Mai didn't expect to hear this. She asked, didn't she? She couldn't believe it because Siwu had adapted quickly enough and was getting used to what was happening. 
When she saw him for the first time and heard the confidence in his words, she was impressed by him. Although Siwu has already made up his mind, it might be a good idea to aim higher. Siwu frowned and asked, higher. Mai responded with one word, people. And then she decided to clarify, saying that they were in danger from the new king, and Siwu was afraid of that. If so, why wouldn't he become king and extend the law for another 600 years? Siwu didn't expect to hear this, he said hesitantly, can I ask a question? Mai smiled sweetly and happily replied, yes. He can ask her what he wants, because Siwu is her first human friend. If something is interesting, she will try to answer it. Siwu started to say that it wasn't serious, but it was dry mouthed. Siwu abruptly changed the subject and said that the monster inventory next to her had just started flashing. He pointed at it, and Mai turned her head, looked at the scroll with the word urgent written on it in black and red letters, and said, Is this? This is an urgent call. This is heard by all the monsters in the area when something important happens. If the call is transmitted to the human world, then it means that the monster broke the rules and injured the person, okay. Mai calmly took the cup of drink and continued to say that this hadn't happened in decades. It can't be an urgent call. Mai trailed off as a realization hit her. She said what? And after a few seconds, she screamed so loudly that all the nearest neighbors could hear it. Mai clutched her head with a horrified expression, and Siwu didn't fully understand what was going on, seriously. Night had fallen, and clouds were flying across the sky, with stars and a full moon shining through. Siwu snapped his fingers like Mai did earlier, and suddenly the inventory flew up, which surprised him. The scroll opened and Siwu tried to draw a thing on it, asking, so he just needs to put his hand out. On the canvas, he drew a monster treasure, which immediately appeared on his right forearm. He wondered if he just needed to wear it, or if it was some kind of armor. You will need to ask how to use it. Siwu looked at his watch, which read 9.56. He remembered saying that it wouldn't take long. Mai then said that it had already been six hours. Half a day is six hours, and since they arrived at four, you need to return before ten, right? Mai asked me to wait for her and do nothing, and she would be back soon. Siwu agreed, okay. Finally, she turned around and said that he could talk to her informally, they were friends, right? When she returns, she can simply be called Sol Mai, and suddenly she was gone. Siwu stood worriedly at the door and thought about how it had been more than ten hours. Is everything all right? If he'd known this was going to happen, at least he'd have taken her number. Siwu glanced at the transparent display rack where his father's picture stood, and thought if goblin blood was flowing through his veins, it must be from his dad. He remembered Babai saying that he looked like he was from the fourth or fifth generation. Even though he has a bit of human blood in him, Siwu continued to wonder, did his father know that he was also a goblin? Or, but he didn't have time to think about it, because there was a strange noise, as if someone was flying nearby. Siwu stiffened and frowned. He asked, was it Siol Mai? Meanwhile, a real fight broke out in one of the narrow alleys. One guy with dark green hair lay on the asphalt, crying and shaking as an unknown black creature choked him. This monster's entire body was completely dark except for the white glowing teeth and purple chain around its neck. Bright flashes of light and rumbling began. Siol Mai said irritably, really? She's still catching it and catching it, no end in sight. At this rate, she won't have any feathers left. She looked down at her dark feather that was stuck in the wall. Mai asked what she was so worried about. It doesn't even feel pain, does it? Siol Mai looked very threatening as she held her arm out and continued to block the monster that flew up. The guy who had recently been strangled crawled back to the wall and looked on in horror. Then Mai decided to finally deal with her enemy this time without regret. She approached the victim, who continued to cry and press himself against the wall. Mai told him not to worry, his friend would be fine. The wound is shallow and she's applied self to stop the bleeding, and the ambulance is on its way. Sial Mai was touching the face and neck of the victim, who was bleeding from the ears. At this moment, that same huge black monster once again made itself felt, and it made the poor common man look on in horror. Mai could feel the huge, sinister creature attacking her from behind, but she was prepared for it. Suddenly, someone else came and told Sial Mai to keep her head up. If word spread that she was beaten by such a thing, then the shame would cover her entire family. Mai turned around with a smile on her face, seeing her friend, and said, well, her reputation is not very good and she knew that Appa would be on her side. The guy frowned and asked, who did she call Appa? Mai replied that he was a little older than her and close to her, so he was her Appa. If he doesn't like it, then she can call him by his first name, Goya. The guy suggested that maybe Mai should call him something polite. Goyu swiped his palm in the air, and a glowing magic formed around his fingers. Mai said Oroboni, then. Goyo rolled his eyes and said wearily that she could call him whatever she wanted. He 
he looked at the frightened man and hypnotized him, telling the crying boy to think of this day as a bad one. A car appeared in the alley and hit them with a friend. The driver fled the scene. Until the ambulance arrives, he should not be afraid and just rest. Sial Mai sat quietly on the asphalt and watched what was happening. She turned to her friend and said that hypnosis wasn't his family's innate magic, was it? She had heard that learning such magic separately was very difficult. Mai tried to learn from Selwa, but the fox scolded her and Mai gave up. At this moment, the person's unconscious body slowly fell to the ground, making a dull sound. Goyu scratched his neck and asked, does that mean Mai is overtaking him? There are two people here, how many did she catch? Sial Mai thought for a while and replied that including the ones he helped her with, there were a total of 24. And there wasn't a single normal monster among the creatures. All Drizhiglati. Everyone is on leashes, something is controlling the evil spirits. Of the ones Mai saw, the Drysgloths killed seven and wounded about fifty. Who needs it and why? Mai frowned sadly at Goya, who was still listening intently. Mai continued to say, These beasts know how serious a crime it is to injure a person. Do monsters like to cause carnage so much? Goyu closed his eyes and said that she was wrong. Monsters don't just like it, these creatures have a purpose. Sial Mai asked indignantly, do creatures kill people for profit? She doesn't understand. Goyu replied that it was understandable, since the monster generation didn't know much about it. Since ancient times, goblins have eaten humans, but not because the monsters were hungry or sadistic. These goblins consumed human blood and flesh, because humans themselves are incredibly healthy food for monsters. Mai was shocked by what she had just learned. She said she couldn't believe it, she'd never heard of anything like it. Goyu stepped closer to Sol Mai and replied that everyone knew this before, but it just didn't reach their generation. One can easily become strong by eating human flesh. If everyone knew about this, would the human world be as peaceful as it is now? Mai knew exactly what he was talking about. After all, she had passed the qualification test. At that moment, Sial Mai remembered how happy she was when she got the test. Few young people like them, who are not even 500 years old, will dare to go through all the troubles and take such a difficult test. Only the weird ones, like Mai or Goyu, can do this, because the human world is a boring place where there is no point in going until the law changes. This is how their generation sees the human world. Goyu was silent for a few seconds, and then said that now that the festival time is approaching, all the monsters are trying to become at least a little stronger. There are those monsters who know about the secret of human flesh, and the creatures are willing to take risks. My thought back to the beast that Suu had recently defeated. Goyu asked her, surely she should know about this too, since Babai is helping. Over the past few days, many people have gone crazy in their pursuit of power. Stupidity is not an excuse, but a state of mind, and if Goyu were in their shoes, he would never make such a mess. Instead of attracting attention with spirits that couldn't even move stealthily, he would do it all by himself, secretly abducting people one by one before eating them. Goyu turned his gaze to the two guys, one of whom was injured and the other was still unconscious. Mai said that whoever did this must be a huge coward, who wouldn't dare attack someone who couldn't even resist. Goyu replied that even if the criminal uses evil spirits, he may have the ability to summon hundreds of them. So it will seem to him that such a use of them is much safer than personal intervention. Mai looked at her friend and said it might be a way to tell him that instead of acting like an attention-hungry jerk, you can just do it. But she didn't say anything. She opened her eyes wide, as if a realization had come to her. It can't be. She called herself stupid and told Goyu that she was already going. Bye. Appa will clean up everything here, right? She turned into a bird and immediately flew away, leaving behind only feathers and a bewildered friend. Siwu was looking around from the balcony of his house. He said, what's that? It was closed a minute ago. Siwu turned his head to the sides, trying to understand what was going on, when suddenly he heard a rustle behind him and felt someone's presence. The masked man thought how simple it was. If he had known that Siwu would be unprotected, then he wouldn't have tried so hard. The stranger was about to attack Siwa from behind, but Siwa deftly dodged. He grabbed the attacker's arm, and purple magic sparkled from his feet. A strange man with burning eyes thought, this freak knew everything. Goblin S serum, lightning cut. The stranger flew into the ground and a powerful stream of bright light was formed from it. Suwu thought that he felt like his heart was going to jump out of his chest. The ability, although I don't want to call it that, is one of the characteristics of goblins. Suwu was looking at the damaged balcony that now had a hole in it, and the goblin treasure was still wearing on his arm. He thought that it was rare to beat him with the same attack. Suwu sighed heavily as he recalled the recent fight with the beast, namely the moment when he was bitten on the shoulder. In that instant, that chilled down my spine right in front of vinegar. If Suwu hadn't realized that this was the right feeling, he would have been killed. 
In any case, he just dropped the stranger without much thought. But luckily he didn't hit anyone, right? Siwoo looked from the balcony at the place where he had thrown the man's body, but there was no one there. A huge hole was formed in the asphalt covered with smoke. Nothing to worry about. But Siwoo was wrong, because he soon sensed a new danger near him. It was still the same man who said that he had already put all the people in the area to bed. Because if they all shouted at once, he probably wouldn't be able to do it properly. A snake-like creature wrapped around Siwoo's neck and began to choke him. He tried to free himself from the grip, but it didn't work. And then the stranger continued to say, so this is it. Is Siwoo really the goblin everyone is talking about? His monster strength seems quite insignificant, and the stranger thought that Siwoo would hit harder. A second later, the same huge tail threw Siwoo to the side and threw him off the balcony, causing him to hit the asphalt with all his strength. Flashes of purple and blue light formed all around, illuminating the entire area. Siwoo lay on the cracked asphalt, writhing in pain. The man said he didn't want to throw it that far. I wonder if the floor has weakened since his last fall. The stranger landed just a few meters away from the immobilized Siwoo. He was wearing a dark green suit with a huge thick snake tail sticking out from under it. The monster said that people would probably think that it was because of the poor quality of the building or the explosion of a gas pipe. Bad luck for those who live here, but at least the rental prices will fall. A monster that harms people, Saul Mai still hasn't returned. Snake said it would be nice if Siwoo broke after one throw, right? Siwoo struggled to his knees at this moment, trying to stand up but his entire body was shaking. The main source of both problems is the man in front of him. Siwoo knew that it was all because of the monster. The man had a smile all over his face, and his thin eyebrows went up as he said that resisting Siwoo was just adding to his troubles. Siwoo also felt that he was facing an incredible danger right now. And so it turned out. A moment later, a giant snake the size of a multi-story building appeared in front of Siwoo. It bared its long fangs and was shrouded in a purple glow. Siwu got to his feet and took up a defensive stance. The man licked his snake-like tongue, the tip of which was cut in two. Is that asking? Well, to give Siva a chance. He just needed to let the stranger eat it and not say anything. Siva was not happy with this scenario. He looked at his enemy with a frown, and the stranger told him not to look at him like that. It won't hurt him, because they have quite a big difference in monster classes. Siwu will just die with more pain if he fights, and if the result is the same, wouldn't it be better to die painlessly? And since that's the case, he can even promise him something. Siwu could feel how tense he was at this moment. He was ready to start fighting at any second. The stranger said that he would let Siwu's mother go and not eat someone else. The man suddenly took out a photo that showed another human Siwu and his mother. The man's face revealed a sinister smile, somewhat resembling that of a madman, and he asked, How is Siwu doing this? He thinks that the sentence is very important, but the stranger couldn't finish it because at that moment Siwu started attacking him, and a spiral of purple glowing magic formed around him. Siwu hit the man with as much of his strength as possible, and then he grabbed onto someone else's clothes, gripping it tightly. Goblin cheese. The stranger apologized for this. Such a banal and crude threat, isn't it? Even he thinks he's overdone it, but what can he do? Siwu's body suddenly went rigid and began to tremble, and he realized that he was unable to control his movements, because the stranger raised his bloody fingers in the air, and a green glow formed around them. The monster said he couldn't think of anything more provocative. Unique magic murderous blasphemy. The man said that his unique magic was poison. The force isn't so bad, but it needs to be touched to make it work. Siwu continued to stand there, shaking violently and frowning in anger. He remembered how he had hit his enemy a second ago, and that was his mistake. The man said, stupid ability, right. The monster couldn't use it against those who were stronger than it, and even to use force on Siwa, it had to think carefully with its brain. Siwu himself was sitting on the asphalt at that moment, all his veins swollen and began to protrude in blue lines over his skin. The monster said that he had heard that those with a good bloodline could defeat others with just a glance. Siwu thought about how he couldn't gather the strength in his body as if he had sleep paralysis. The man continued to say this life is really unfair. When the rules are already set, the weak can only be victims. If Siwu had learned how to use the thing on his hand, then things might have been different. The photo fell to the muddy ground, and the monster transformed into a snake and hissed, sticking its tongue out. In its ominous voice, it said that problems do not wait for a person to prepare for them. Well, the monster will remember Siwa, so let him keep that in mind in his next life. Siwa's face was dripping with sweat from exertion and he was thinking, not that he couldn't move at all. One move, he felt like he could do it. The snake opened its mouth, revealing sharp teeth covered in venom. The creature was about to bite Siwa, 
but he finally managed to summon all of his power into his fist to bring the magic out. The serpent was surprised when a powerful stream of glowing energy was directed in its direction. There was a loud noise. However, the snake remained fine and it said it almost died. A second later, the monster hit Siwa, so he flew a couple dozen meters away, hitting the wall and getting stuck in it. The monster thought that even though the poison was already circulating through Siwu's body, it was able to do this. Can't even a weak goblin be underestimated. The snake hissed and stuck out its long tongue when it suddenly felt something stick into its body. What's that? Then an unknown person in a mask resembling a clown mask appeared nearby. The ancestor of the storm that lives above the nine heavens and dominates the Ministry of Thunder. A second later, the weapon that was stuck in the snake hit the monster's body with a powerful charge of magic. The night is just beginning. Siwu was still sitting on the ground as darkening veins continued to spread across his face. The masked stranger said that he could see they were doing something useless, the assholes. He held a sword in his hands and walked towards the serpent, which had once again taken on the form of a human. Knives fell out of his body and he told me to keep these useless weapons. Is the main skill of a human exorcist speaking in a bass voice? Where do they even teach them to talk like that? Inside, Snake thought he was buying time, but it looked like he was caught up anyway. How did the masked stranger get here? No, that's not what matters. This masked freak is dangerous. He is on a completely different level compared to the rest of the charlatans. At this moment, the storm ancestor took out a sword from its sheath, preparing to attack the snake that cowardly took a step back. He couldn't decide whether to leave or not. If he hesitates, he will be finished. That Chromai isn't a weakling either. But if even that idiot came for him, he wouldn't be able to defeat him even if he resurrected. Snake said it was very, very bad, holding on to his bloody side. The storm ancestor was slightly surprised as he watched the scarlet liquid flow. Snake continued to hold on to his wound and said that if he could, he would wait for the festival. The same black creature with the chain around its neck appeared nearby. It was heading straight for the storm ancestor. The snake man asked, not bad, right. When it was in its right mind, this name was widely known in the West. Although the serpent doesn't know how it ended up in this state, this creature has the body of a god-class monster. Finally, the man said to have fun. It's a pretty good fit for an appearance-obsessed jerk. Maybe he should finish his meal first. Siwu watched quietly, feeling weak all over. The black beast was creating a ball of orange-yellow energy as the storm ancestor swung his weapon and charged forward. The space around them was filled with smoke and black magic. The storm descendant formed a shield around him the moment the black beast released magic from its mouth, their battle began. The snake could hardly believe what he saw, it was exclaimed, what? Because the storm descendant had instantly overpowered the black creature and was now ready to attack the serpent. Suwu watched the scene carefully. A moment later, the storm descendant towered over the defeated opponent, which was the serpent. He went up to Siv, who was still on the ground, and said he didn't think he was in league with the bug. If Siwu wants to survive, it's best to answer questions about why he's here. At this point, Siwu didn't let the other person finish and said that he couldn't believe even though he could hear his voice. The storm ancestor's eyes widened in surprise, even if it wasn't visible under the mask. Siwu stood up and said what he wanted to ask. Did the ancestor not recognize his voice? Then the storm ancestor took off his mask and asked Choi Siwu in surprise. What kind of view is this? Siwu smiled, laughing a little, and said, well, it's a long story. Because the snake had thrown Siwa so far away, the action now took place in the parking lot, which was illuminated by the moonlight. Waxing took off his mask and said hesitantly, Choi Siwu. Meanwhile, Siwu himself got to his feet, crawled out of the wall, and started walking towards his friend. Yuzin asked the question, what happened? He won't even ask about the body. How is Siwu able to deal with this thing? Yuxin put his hand on his friend's shoulder, and Siwu exhaled heavily because he was still having a hard time. Siwu asked me to wait, he just couldn't breathe. Scared, Yuzin thought, poison, and not a simple one, but an ability, with the medicine that he has on hand, he will not be able to cure this. Yuzin said yes, Siwu shouldn't think about it now, let him wait. At this moment, Siwu's body began to recover, and the protruding veins slowly disappeared. Yuzin was surprised, does his friend have regenerations? He was looking at Siwu's body in surprise when suddenly a strange sound was heard behind him, which made his friends turn around. From the place where the defeated monster lay, there was a long trail of blood that spread across the parking lot. Yuxin frowned and said what nonsense. Seriously, the friends came out of the parking lot closer to Siwu's house and sat down on a bench. He asked if his friend was already feeling better. Yuxin was sitting on the bench with his head bowed and said, Siwa is still being asked if he is feeling better. As if that's even possible. 
Not only did the person he had known for three years turn out to be half monster, his friend was half goblin. Siwu smiled and scratched his cheek awkwardly after being fully recovered. Yuxin had a lot of thoughts in her head. For three years, right in front of their eyes, they didn't even suspect anything. They criticized the defense minister for wanting to become the king of the moon, but they didn't notice Siwa. If his father found out about this, he would make fun of him all over, Siwa said the Yuxin family. He never said what kind of martial arts they were studying, right? His friend replied that this was exactly the case. Their family's duty is to train and destroy supernatural creatures. If it wasn't for that, then everyone would have long ago considered him a nutcase. And then Yuzin added, well, there are only six months left. Siwu was surprised, opening his eyes wide, six months. So Yuxin also knows about the festival. He asked if that was how often it happened. Well, the supernatural creatures that break out into their world and harm people. Yuzin clenched his hands into fists and replied that this didn't happen very often. In general, this happens quite rarely. If the monsters were fighting each other, then he wouldn't mind. Attacks on humans have been very rare over the past 100 years, but things have recently changed. Did Siwu specify how recently? Yuzin looked up at his friend and replied that for monsters, humans are a source of power. Monsters that want to become kings consume not only other monsters, but also humans. A month ago, the number of missing people began to grow, especially in densely populated cities, and although there is no direct evidence that these are monsters, in most cases there were signs of struggle in the homes of the missing people. However, this is the first time that monsters have shown themselves so clearly. Yuzin looked very annoyed when he said that. Suddenly, he pulled out his sword, which surprised and frightened Siva, and then said, So what do they have here? From the sky, someone landed on the ground, but because of the flash of light, it was impossible to immediately determine who it was. A familiar voice shouted, Siwu. It was Mai. She was trembling slightly and looked at Siwa worriedly, asking if he was okay. Not injured, Mai apologized and said that she was a complete fool. At that moment, Yuxin pointed his sword at her and ordered her to stop and not come to them, the monster. He said one more step and he'd think she was attacking. Then he'd have to kill her. Yuxin wasn't joking. It could be seen from his serious face. Siwu tried to defend Mai by saying that she was, but Yuxin interrupted his friend and said that he knew that she was not a human, but a monster. Surely the creatures knew what the rule was, so he'd warned her instead of killing her right away. There's no use talking to them if someone wants a fight. He does this for Siwu's sake. They said that if Siwu passed the exam, he could live in the human world, right? Yuzin called his friend a fool. Does he even understand what that means? They're monsters. Even if they look like them outwardly and have individual traits, the very nature remains the same. The creatures are driven by a thirst for power and slaughter. These are monsters that eat each other and people. Mai listened to what Yuxin was saying with a look of annoyance and surprise on her face. He went on to say that it didn't matter how mixed Siwu's blood was. He's still human. This place is his home. He doesn't need the permission of the monsters to be here. Not only has he been kidnapped, but he now says that he must become a full-fledged monster to stay at home. This is real nonsense. No matter what happens, Yuxin will never let his friend go back. See all Mai thought that she understood what Yuxin meant. From Siwu's point of view, it's all a nightmare, but he's already on the list of monsters. No matter how Siwu feels about it, he's part of the monster realm. For now, it's best to put aside what's right and what's wrong. Breaking the rules would have dire consequences for both Du Siwu and his shaman friend. We need to resolve this issue before it gets even worse. Si All Mai decided that she would run away with Siwu and try not to hurt anyone. But can she? Just his aura and effort is enough to tell you that he is a strong person. Maybe Selva and Goyu could figure it out, but she, no. Even if she can't say it out loud, standing around and doing nothing is definitely not an option. She stood up, clutching her quill, and glowed with a faint purple light. Sialmai said that she was very sorry, but as a guardian, she would have to take Siwa with her. Yuxin kept his sword pointed at her, and he said that if she ignored the warning, he would. Mai interrupted Yuxin and agreed, okay. At that moment, Siwu swung his foot at his friend, which surprised Yuxin, and he exclaimed, What is this? In the next second, Siwu snatched the sword from Yuxin, which surprised him. He said it looked interesting. Did the engraving mean something? He was looking at the sword and the symbols on it. Yuxin was indignant, his friend was bewitched under hypnosis. Maybe it's under control. No, it seems to be something else. He exclaimed, Siwu, what's happening? His friend replied that maybe he doesn't understand the term murder, but he thinks that the phrase crazy monster that devours its own kind can be applied to Yuxin, as well as to Sif himself, because he already managed to devour someone today. 
Yuzin opened his eyes wide, not expecting to hear this. Siwu continued and said that he was said to be a monster who was robbed of the right to be a monster. Honestly, he doesn't know how much of this is true. But either way, he killed someone to protect himself and those around him, and he's not going to stop. Siwu doesn't want to harm people, but he is willing to absorb monsters if it makes him stronger. Yuxin pointed at himself with his palm and exclaimed, but he doesn't need to go that far. His family, no, even Yuxin himself has enough power to protect both Siwa and his mother in six months. Siwu then stuck his friend's sword into the pavement tiles and said, Hey, Yuxin, there's something else I need to tell him. He will become the king of monsters. Siwu smiled awkwardly as he spoke, because he knew that this goal was very difficult to achieve. Yuxin stood there in shock and couldn't believe what he was hearing, and Mai was also surprised. Yuzin exclaimed, Is Siwu crazy? Does he even know what that means? Siwu laughed awkwardly and said that he wouldn't read out the exact definition, but he needed to try, take a chance. If he succeeds, the world can continue to exist as before. Yuzin couldn't find the words, he said Siwu. His friend asked him not to look at him like that. What can Siwu do? It just so happened. He doesn't know if it will work or not, but what else is there? It's better to do something than give up and stand still. This is his view of the situation. Siwu firmly stated that he wanted to try it. Yuzin pulled out his sword from the sidewalk and replied dryly that he understood. It doesn't matter if Siwu is a human or a monster. If his thoughts are pure, then he doesn't need to prove it by force. But if, as a monster, he crossed the line one day, Yuxin would destroy him without delay. Siwu watched his friend put the weapon back in its case and replied, Okay, that's the way it should be. When Yuxin decides he deserves it, let it be something he'd kill himself for. Then Yuxin took his mask and said, Hey, Guardian, what's your name? The crow replied to Sial Mai. She is a messenger to the realm of monsters. Yuzin put a mask on his face and said, Okay. He apologized for meddling in their affairs, but Yuzin had heard that monsters also had laws and regulations. If Siwu failed, if he was unjustly killed or injured, then as the main shaman of the Hall of the Star, he would destroy everyone involved. Yuzin started to walk away, turning slightly to look over his shoulder at his friend. He told him that they would see each other again, and he didn't have to worry about his mother Siwa. With a sad look, Siwu called out to his friend, Yushin. But he was already gone, never looking back. Mai sat down on the ground and said that she thought she was going to die of fright. She sees the shaman for the first time. Are they all so scary? Someone said no. This guy is special even among them. Mai turned around and saw Goya, asking, did he come for her? Goyu said yes, but what else could he do? He immediately understood what Mai was up to. Even without knowing how strong the enemy was or how many allies they had, she rushed forward. If Yuxin was any stronger, she would have been eaten. Mai looked down sadly and didn't say anything because she knew her friend was right. Goyu said after looking at Siwa, is he that reckless half-goblin? Looking up at him, Siwu took a deep breath and said hello. Those of the monsters that originate from animals are called demon beasts. In most cases, they are related to their shape and the instincts of animals that can be considered their ancestors. As the power grows, both human and animal forms begin to change. Such monsters are called ghost beasts. For example, Selv, who could become a white nine-tailed fox. Moreover, there are those who grow into their primary form. In the past, such people were called divine people. These are creatures that were worshipped by both monsters and humans. Goyu said that he was pleased to meet you and gave his name. Sif will have to defeat him to become the monster king. Goyu extended his hand to seal the new acquaintance. He is a member of the Black Turtle Clan. Goyu held out his hand to shake and said, Hi, Choi Siwu. Then Siwu himself was surprised and asked himself what was going on. The atmosphere changed. Seol Mai suddenly shouted at Siwu not to shake Goyu's hand. Why is he suddenly showing up and doing this? Siwu already had a rough day, and now, Seol Mai was very angry, shouting loudly and clenching her fists tightly. Goyu asked, what's the difference? Is there some rule that makes it necessary for him to sleep forever? Plus, it's fun. A half-goblin who claims to be the king of monsters. Goyu shook Sila's hand on his own. His eyes glowed pink. Purchased equipment, an oval of purple flames flared up around them falling earth. When the bright flash of light disappeared, Siwu realized that they had teleported. Now he was standing barefooted on the damp ground next to the pools of water. His whole body was shaking, and Goyu asked if he was stronger than he looked, right. Even when faced with the falling earth for the first time, Siwu still managed to stay on his feet, something you don't often see. 
Moreover, Siwu doesn't even seem surprised. And really looking at Goya with a frown, Siwu asked, does he want to eat it too? Goyu replied that, well, that's probably the end of it, right? He wants to ask something before they start, is Siwu playing games? Not metaphorically, he's talking about video games. Siwu was surprised by the abrupt change of subject and replied that he had been into it in middle school, but not much in high school anymore. Goyu nodded, yes. And what genre did he like? A mob, FPS, MMORPG, or maybe mobile. Sivu thought, well, if you choose, probably an action RPG. He's not a fan of online games. This gives you the feeling that spending money is more important than playing. Goyu grinned and said, okay, they seem to have a lot in common. Sivu sensed danger behind him and turned around. Suddenly, dozens of rocks were thrown at him. Then Sivu deftly dodged it, protecting himself from the water, after which a sharp piece of ice came out and a few seconds later several more ice blocks flew directly at Siwu with their sharpened ends. There was a crash and a blue-white flash of light. Goyu said that Siwu is definitely very fast. Instead of dodging and attacking, he focused on it first before dodging it. He attacks, and Siwu watches him. Pretty good for a beginner, okay. Siwu decided to use his magic, which shrouded his palm with a purple light. When it comes to grappling, Siwu's sense and talents are beyond anything else, but what matters most right now is his ability to learn. Enemies who try to attack him in the same ways that he has already experienced have taught him to be careful and not let down his guard. His decision is a lesson he learned today. Siwu clenched his fist forcefully, rushing forward to hit Goya. There was a rumble as Siwu sent a powerful stream of energy towards his opponent. The Bracers, armor that releases the wearer's life force and energy. Because of Siwu's attack, smoke appeared on the shore, making it difficult to see. And one more lesson, even if it seems that the attack has hit the target, you should never relax ahead of time. It was at this moment that a retaliatory attack flew at Siwa, which he hurried to defend against. He thought that the monster's power might not be complete, but it seemed like he understood it. Statistical electricity that passes through the body starts from the abdomen. Intuitively, it seems that somewhere around 60% remains. When Siwu attacked hard, it spent about 10%. Each small attack took about 3% off. If the strength reached 0% then it would be depleted like last time. It looks like he can't use it indefinitely. Goyu thoughtfully said, an amazing concept. He didn't think that he would be able to use his abilities so early. Goyu underestimated Siva and had to break through the first phase as soon as they started. He was surrounded by floating rocks that glowed with magic. Siwu asked Goya to tell him if what he was saying was true and if he was going to eat it. Siwu stood with his fists clenched in front of his chest, ready to fight if anything happened. He doesn't know how to say it properly, but he doesn't feel like Goyu wants to hurt him. Then Goyu closed his eyes and with a slight smile on his lips said, Well, when a person blatantly lies, it usually happens. He doesn't have a personal grudge or desire to eat it. As he said at the beginning, he was hooked by what he said. Does Siwu know what exactly the Monster King is? Siwu continued to stand with his fists outstretched in front of his chest and asked, Literally the Monster King, isn't it? Introducing laws and ruling other monsters. Koyu grinned and his eyes lit up purple again. He said, But if you think about it a bit, isn't it weird? The contest is just for strength, and the election cycle occurs every 666 years. The king will rule for hundreds of years and this is decided by just one festival. The fact that all monsters obey this strange custom from ancient times, which must be followed simply because it is a tradition. Siwu listened to everything Goyu said and thought about it. Monsters are true to their desire and instincts. Just because the strong one came up with a law and introduced some rule does not mean that they will obey it. In that case, the slaughter and slaughter wouldn't stop, right? Therefore, to prevent this, the ancient monsters created a precautionary measure, the Monster King. The nature and morals of monsters lead to an imminent catastrophe. To prevent this from happening, everyone agreed on one thing, you need to protect this abutment. All the monsters of the world obey one creature in exchange for harmony in existence. This is the king of monsters. Fortunately, for 10,000 years, kings have controlled the monsters of their eras without much change. Maybe their policies were different, but the basic principles of monster survival remain the same. There was only one exception, the king of this generation. Siwu was surprised to hear this, and Goyu went on to say that if the human leaders once issued such a law that no one else in the world can eat meat under any pretext, what would happen? Siwu presented a similar case and replied that everyone would protest violently. There is no guarantee that this law will be implemented and it is unlikely that it will end in protests alone. Goyu nodded his head and replied, That's right, but they held on for 660 years, no more or less, 
didn't they? And that alone will tell Sif how important the Monster King is to them, how much they have suffered to avoid desecrating the tradition. But now the monsters are running out of patience. Does Siwu understand what Goyu is talking about? After a few seconds, Siwu replied that if the next king made the same law, not everyone would be as obedient as before. That's what Goy is getting at, isn't it? Goyu snapped his fingers, glanced at Siwa, and replied that he was quick to grasp. Yes, even if the king ordered it, they might not listen. Also, if the monster king is the strongest of all, if most of the monsters don't want to obey, then there's nothing to be done. If it comes to that, it's not just the new monster king that will fall. The very existence of such a centuries-old concept as the king of monsters, power and symbol will quite literally fall to the ground. Does Siwu understand what he's saying now? He will become the king of monsters and keep everything as it is. Few people will turn a blind eye to such words. Siwu looked down at him as he was shorter in stature. A young monster can laugh and go further, but the older one will be torn to pieces. Referring to Mai, Goyu said that he understood where the source was. Siwu is good, but it doesn't fit the stereotype of monsters. The problem is that he does not understand how the world works and stupidly distributes his indulgence in all directions. Siwu clenched his fists and frowned as he said, so they're asking him to take it back. Goyu replied that he was right. To be honest, at first he thought that Siwu was just some inexperienced slug that he would crush with his foot. But now Siwu seems more mature. He's a fast learner, has a lot of potential for growth and all that. Goyu then grinned and suggested to Sif that he should come under his command. If Siwu helps him become the monster king, then it will allow him to become the ruler of the Korean peninsula. Not a bad suggestion, right? Even if he ruled, he wouldn't be able to completely destroy the humans, but he would be able to leave a few that were close to Siwu. After Siwu thought about it carefully, he said, well, what about Goyu? How strong is it? Goyu is convinced that he will become king, but does he objectively assess himself? Goyu asked again, does he have it? He couldn't say that he was the strongest on the peninsula, but there was no one stronger than him among the representatives. After a short pause, Siwu said, okay. He stepped even closer to the other man in his bare feet and held out his hand for a handshake. Siwu said that if it means protecting the people around him, he accepts the offer. Goyu was a little surprised at first, but then he smiled contentedly and said that as he thought, Siwu didn't disappoint. He made the right choice, and they shook hands. At this point, Siwu admitted that he wouldn't feel guilty, and then he released a stream of magic on his arm, attacking Goya, who definitely didn't expect it. Siwu said that it was him, meaning Goyu broke the trust between them. He pretended to shake hands, cheated, and attacked first. These are all his chips. Siwu grabbed his opponent's clothes. It was completely different from what Siwu had shown before. Now it was a different kind of goblin fight. He had used up all 60% of the energy and only a little bit was left, having squeezed out all his strength. Siwu didn't do it by reflex, but with cold calculation, and for the first time, he implemented the technique full of confidence. Goblin Ra, Mountain Upheaval. Siwu threw Goya with all his might. Without delay, he shouted loudly, and his eyes shone with a bright light, only with confidence and readiness. At this moment, due to the defeated body flying into the middle of the lake, a lot of splashes and bursts of powerful magic formed around. There was a hiss, and a dome of smoke and blue light formed around them. Siwu landed on the ground, feeling his body tremble slightly, and wondered why this was happening. Is it because of the monster's power, right? Recovery of body and stamina for Siwu who poured all the power of the monster into the attack, leaving only a little reserve, is now unavailable for either. Now that he has run out of resources, Siwu can't continue fighting. Goyu reappeared, fists clenched tightly. Part of his body and face was covered in a crust of ice. He said to restrain the bloodlust until the last moment, and then use up all the monster's strength in one hit. Such a talent for battle is only given by the heavens. A unique monster art, Arctic Chase, that freezes water and lets you control it within a certain radius around. Siwu frowned at Goya, who said that if the difference in the base strength of the monsters between them was just a little less, who knows, maybe Siwu would have devoured him. This is an art that allows you to attack and defend without restrictions. So what were Siwu's last words? He continued to sit on the ground and replied, nothing special. Even if he had had a will, he wouldn't have read it to Goya. And since he had thrown himself at Goya with the idea of killing and devouring from the very beginning, Siwu was preparing himself for the same fate that might await him. Besides, he wasn't finished yet. Goya watched in surprise as Siwu got up and took up a fighting stance saying that if he wanted Siwu to beg for his life or something, 
he thought it was a little early. Suwu's eyes were still burning brightly. Was he waiting for his opponent to show a weak spot so that he could strike at the right moment? Or was the goblin's fighting spirit awakening in him that he wasn't even aware of yet? Goyu grinned and said, Okay, it's a pity that Sieb only has enough strength to stand. Then he raised his hand and Suwu thought that a magic attack was about to happen, but it didn't. Instead, Goyu patted Suwu on the shoulder and said with a smile that Suwu had passed the test. That's right, he didn't disappoint even at the very end, he was just so smothered. At this moment, Suwu was standing there with the most dumbfounded expression on his face, because he wasn't prepared for this turn of events. What does past mean? What does it mean? Goyu kept smiling. Well, he just wanted to see if it was worth supporting Siwa or not. What's the point of rooting for a jerk who has no chance of becoming the monster king? Right. Siwu removed the other's hand and stepped back. He asked again, should I be ill? But Goyu just explained why Siwu can't be the monster king, didn't he? Goyu replied, well, yes, everyone wants to see who the new king will be, but they don't really crave Monster Knight. Goyu hadn't liked the noise of the monster world since he was a kid. He remembered reading a book earlier while someone was fighting noisily next to him. Everyone is tearing each other to shreds and growling for no reason. In fact, he never understood why everyone acted like it was normal and necessary. Compared to that world, it's very peaceful and quiet here. And although it seems that people live very chaotically, at least they can choose how they want to live, right? In addition, monsters like that they, humans, are the kind that knows what to do with boredom. Manhua, games, novels, movies. These are all useless things that do not exist in the world of monsters. But these creatures like these useless things more than the behavior of humans. If it happens that the human world can no longer do this, then it will be a tragedy for the monsters. Siwu continued to sense the catch. Did he think Goyu was using the plural? Does this mean that there are other monsters who think so? See all my. Suwu said that he understood what Goyo meant, but he still didn't need to support him. He can become a monster himself. Goyo, with a smile on his face, interrupted the other's words and said, This is too much trouble. The Korean peninsula has every chance of winning, but will Suwu become king or not? There is one problem. Including Goyo, all the candidates are from famous families. They have talents that they inherited as well as optimal methods of using unique monster techniques that pass down to them from their ancestors. Even if there are unique monster techniques of similar strength, the one that has a manual for use, proven by thousands of years of practice, that will be stronger by definition. People have the expression of being born with a golden spoon in their mouth, right? It's the same here. Siwu frowned. Goyu means that the family is like a conglomerate that is passed down from generation to generation, right? Does your family put a lot of pressure on you? Goyu stopped smiling so widely and replied, Pressure. What a cute expression. He would say that the monster is pressed into the ground until it dies. As soon as the child has a grain of talent, the whole family clings to him and shouts that he needs to become the next king of monsters. It doesn't matter if the child wants it or not. As soon as he becomes a representative of the family, he is forced to hang a yoke on him, to work for the sake of other people's interests and desires. If the child is against it, then he is sent to the bottom or killed, so that others will not be offended. Siwu stopped expecting to be attacked and thought, Goyu isn't human, but when the whole family turns away and becomes the enemy, it's cruel. Goyu snapped his fingers and pointed at Siwa saying that he was different. His talent is inherited from a well-known bloodline, but he is not tied to a family or clan. Siwu has his own will and motive to become the monster king. Goyu happily leaned over to Sif and said that he could do it. No, Siwu has to do it. A huge bird hovered in the sky, masking itself in the clouds. Siwu took a step forward, waved his hands, and said that he understood what Goyu was talking about, but he needed to think about it. Everything happened so suddenly. Goyu said that from Siwu's point of view, it's exactly like that. He couldn't finish because a huge bird's paw grabbed his shoulder at that moment. It was Mai who hadn't fully transformed and now had the wings and legs of a bird but the rest of her body looked human. A flash of magic formed, and Mai's eyes lit up with a bright light. She grabbed Goya and threw him hard to the side, causing Siwa to open her eyes and mouth in shock. With a bang, Goyu hit a tree, causing a bright purple glow to appear around him. Mai stood on the ground, stamping her bird's foot, and spread her black and purple wings. Unique monster art, wind feather. Siwa raised his hand in fright and shouted, Mai, stop. But she kept walking steadily toward the pool, her feathers rustling as they flew through the air. There was another hiss and a wave of blue magic appeared. Siwu hurried to Sol Mai, and she said that everything was fine, not even a scratch would be left. It seems that Goyu dived somewhere far away because he knows that a curse is about to hit him. Siwu was surprised, did he dive? What is it? 
Who is he anyway? Mai replied that the person Siwu met wasn't exactly her original friend. If you simplify it, he has something like a split personality. Black Turtle According to legend, this creature was born from a snake and a turtle and became a single body. However, if you trace this origin, it is generally assumed that it was a simple turtle. But they say in the distant past there was a genius who understood why yin and yang are needed. He separated the yin and yang from his monster power. As a result, he broke through all of his innate limits and awakened as a divine beast. So the first black turtle appeared. After the heirs of the black turtle were born, they adopted these unique abilities. But to become a full-fledged black turtle, you need to go through a very painful training. A side effect of this process is the snake, the person Siwu interacted with. Now Mai and Siwu were in the real world, sitting in Siwu's apartment, who was indignantly listening to everything Mai said. He said, well, Goyu didn't seem so bad to him, even though it was different in the beginning. Mai agreed, but there is no malice in Goyu. The problem is that there is no particular profundity in it either. He is impulsive and does what he wants, and he is also very nasty and often puts people in an uncomfortable position. From the concentration of the yang energy of a monster's power, a personality is naturally created. Mai doesn't know if it's because of this, but Goyu's core personality is very calm and cool-headed. This is completely subject to the turtle. For some reason, Snake Goyu was nuts from the start. But personality is only half the trouble. For some reason, it even has the ability to gain control of its body whenever it pleases. This often does so, which sometimes causes trouble. Therefore, even when Goya was chosen as the representative of the family, many were against it. They called me a half-turtle and all that. Goyu is so talented that he quickly convinced his opponents. They need to get back soon. Siwu looked down at the floor thoughtfully, clutched the bag in his hands, and said, Yes. Mai moved closer to him and quickly reassured him, telling him not to worry. It wasn't his fault. Even if they say something for being late, it won't affect Siwa in any way. He said it wasn't that he was worried about, just the broken porch. They've been gone for a month, so mom will get really nervous when she sees this. Mai sighed uncomfortably. Suddenly, a familiar voice came from behind, telling him not to worry about it. Mai and Siwu turned in surprise and saw Babai. He said that everything will be restored tomorrow. They have people who are responsible for such things. See all Mai has to go first, because Babai has something to say to Siwu in private. Mai became nervous and quickly said that Siwu was doing everything right. It was because of her and her miscalculation. Babai said yes, he already knows that. But Mai just doesn't need to be here, because the three of them have something to talk about. Siwu and Mai were surprised, three of them. Babai said that he knows that such sudden visits are rude, but he needs to shake another hand. Selva said, so this is how people live. Well, not bad, not much space, but cozy in its own way. Selva was looking at Siwu's house with her arms crossed behind her back who was surprised and asked if she had already received permission to leave. Selva said no. She raised an eyebrow slightly and added that she was unlucky. They don't give her a 12-hour visit every six months, and she wasn't going to go out into the human world where she had to hide from everyone's eyes. They just dragged her out here. Babai said that he would explain everything if Selkva followed him. Maybe we should start now, shouldn't we? Babai stroked his beard and said yes, we need to start. First you need to share what happened last night. When it got dark in Sacho, Seoul, there were about 50 Drijglatovs. They were all obeying someone and attacking people on the streets. Having dealt with Drijglatami managed to find out that the control method was very rough, and the attacker did not erase his tracks. So Babai thought it was a trick to lure Seol Mai out and target Siwa. Mai was suddenly surprised, peeking out from behind the door. The old man didn't want to say that this wasn't the monster's goal, but it was possible that they had more goals than one. Last night, at least 200 people disappeared from the streets and from the Seoul subway. Everyone was shocked to hear such a large number, but Babai said that this is based on the statements of people who came to human police stations, so the real number of missing people is more than 500. Siwu was very shocked to hear such information. Mai said she couldn't believe it. So this is not one, not two, but there must be a whole group of at least five people who arranged this. If they have a list of suspects, if they work hard on it, maybe they can catch the monsters. Babai said she was right. If the person who did this is from the Korean peninsula, then they will easily find him. But from the traces at the scene of some crimes, you can come to an unpleasant conclusion. It is impossible to accurately count the monsters that came here from other regions. In their native places, this would be immediately caught. So these monsters decided to hunt people in Korea, where it would be much more difficult to catch them. If they don't find and punish the monsters in the shortest possible time, 
Then people will be hunted for half a year before the festival itself. Selva immediately guessed that this was why Babai needed a monster who had the will and ability to protect the human world. He said that now that they needed any help, he wanted to make two of them an offer. Selwa and Suwu know that they have to pass the exam this month. If they agree, the old man will change the format of the exam. Babai frowned and his eyes lit up with the fire of magic. He said that their task now is to find and kill those who have invaded the Korean peninsula as soon as possible. This is their test. Morning came, and the bright sun shone down on the city. At that moment, Yuzin was walking to school without getting enough sleep. There were dark circles under his eyes from lack of sleep. He thought that he shouldn't have let Siva go like this after all. He acted like a coward. If that fool doesn't come back, it's entirely on Yuxin's conscience. We need to take some precautionary measures. Yuxin was distracted from his thoughts by Siwu saying that his friend's phone was turned off. Siwu awkwardly scratched the back of his head and confessed that he knew Yuxin would go to school. Does he have a minute? A lot of things have changed after his words from yesterday, so they have a lot to talk about. Yuxin was very surprised to see his friend here. After a short period of time, they were already sitting in the cafe. Yuxin shouted loudly, What? Is Siwu crazy? As the shout attracted the attention of other people, Siwu felt uneasy and hurried to calm his friend down, telling Yuxin to be quiet. He wasn't supposed to yell in public, and he wasn't going crazy, either. Siwu turned to the people around him and asked for their forgiveness, and then went back to his friend and said that the conditions weren't bad after all, right? He could be here instead of in the monster world, and he wouldn't have to make Yuxin or Mom worry about him. Siwu was drinking his drink while Yuxin rubbed his face with his hand in frustration. He asked Siwu, he doesn't know what class of monster he belongs to, right? Then his friend said, well, how does he know what his class is? He only found out yesterday that he was a monster in principle. Shin, Ryan, Kai, Go, Su. Siwu was surprised and asked what kind of name is that? This is the first time he's heard it, but it still gives him the creeps. It sounded mysterious. Yuzin replied that it wasn't a name. Each of the five words symbolized the monster's status. The lowest Su is a beast, which is basically what it means. Yuzin looked at Siwa and said that most of the monsters were of this class, and although they were dangerous, they were pathetic creatures that were not far removed from ordinary wild beasts. The strength of the creatures is the same and the main advantage of these monsters is weapons and numbers. Ordinary people can fight Su even if they haven't studied magic like Yuzin did. There are even references to such cases in the old records, and with the current weapons, Su monsters can be fought without problems. Difficulties start with higher grades, when monsters get to a level where ordinary people can't do anything about it. Go is a monster that has the strength of at least a hundred people. But even if Siva is pitted against hundreds of people, this comparison only concerns their physical strength. So even if you send a thousand people, they will all die. Siva didn't like what he was hearing. He said, if these are the two lowest grades, what about the other three? Catastrophic power. Yuxin couldn't give Siwu an exact answer because he hadn't seen one himself, but there are concerns that Kai-class monsters are ten times stronger than Go-class monsters if left unchecked. Such monsters can turn a small town into a branch of hell on earth overnight. If we talk about Seoul, then somewhere near the district. In the case of Shin and Yoon, you just need to know not to mess with them. Although most likely he will not contact, because such powerful creatures will not bother to break the laws. Suddenly, Yuxin put the mug down on the table and told him not to even think about getting involved in this hunt. Siwu should try to escape on the sly, and if it doesn't work, then he should call Yuxin or hide at his house. If these are really monsters that have invaded Korea, then they are ready to fight the local monsters or shamans like him. Yuxin doesn't know exactly how many of them there are, but it'll be fine even if they're Kai-class monsters. An excited Siwu asked his friend, then what does he think the monster that took the form of a snake is of what class? Yuxin confidently replied that it was small fry. It's unlikely to be a Su-class monster, but it's definitely not a Kai, most likely an average Go. The corpse that the serpent controlled had a much more powerful energy. If he could control even half of the dead monster's strength, then he and Siwu wouldn't be sitting here. There was a reason why the monster was using this as a distraction, and if Yuxin understood the situation correctly, that vile freak almost swallowed Siwa. He remembered his friend exhausted and covered in traces of poison. Yuxin pointed at Siwa and said that his current monster status was lower than that of a snake. It is at best an average, or even a lower level. Siwu lowered his head in embarrassment and clenched his shoulders, and his friend said that he was a goblin or just showing off, the truth is. Therefore, he does not need to get into situations with which he may not be able to cope. He should soberly assess his situation. 
Yuxin thought that even though he wasn't speaking strictly enough, he needed to fix it in Siwu's mind properly so that it wouldn't occur to him. At that moment, Siwu tried to say something, but it came out as an indistinct mumble. Yuzin asked again, what? He can't hear it, so let him speak louder. Siwu looked up and said with enthusiasm in his eyes that if he met the snake again, he was seriously, 100% sure that he would be able to beat it. Just like Yuxin said, if he wasn't there, he wouldn't have had time to squeak. But a lot of things changed during this time, and in a sense, he understood how the power of monsters works, and even a little bit figured out how to fight. Yuxin stared at his friend in shock and thought he was a jerk. With this train of thought, Siwu will ruin himself. Yuxin then got up from his chair and asked Siwu, is he going to school? Yuxin snapped back, no, he's not going to school today. It seems that Siwu himself won't be able to deal with this, so we'll have to deal with it instead. He ordered me to follow him. The Olympic Gymnastics Arena is a sports building built in 1986 for the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul. It is now known as the Big Dome Concert Venue, but ordinary people don't know that it has another purpose. Siwu looked around in shock for the first time being here. He said, wow, who would have thought there was something like this in the basement? He had seen many places like this on his way here. These all belong to the Yuxin family. The Olympic Gymnastics Arena is a special underground area, a public training center. Yuzin replied, of course not. This place is created by the government, because there are other shamans with masters, not just his family. Siwu was surprised, right. So they know about the monsters in the festival, right. His friend replied that since ancient times, powerful shamans have been kept by those in power. No, perhaps the first shamans created the very concept of the state, because their ability to fight monsters would be valued more than anything else. By the standards of the distant past, 666 years ago at the dawn of the Joseon dynasty, the threat of monsters disappeared. But the Joseon family still organized the Constellation Hall for shaman training and the Yushin family continues to go through their service, monsters, festivals, and other things. All this is recognized at the national level. At that moment, Yuxin was talking and taking off his clothes, so now his jacket and school vest were lying on the floor. He said that this is a secret that even at the very top is known to a few and they don't seem to take it seriously enough. Yuxin loosened his tie to take it off and said, well, if Siwu is ready, then let him attack. He had already told him, no restrictions or rules. If Siwu can defeat Yuxin with any of his moves, then he won't have to worry about Siwu fighting monsters. At this moment, Siwu felt insecure because he didn't want to hit his friend. He didn't want to. He asked if Yuxin would use a sword or a dagger like yesterday. His friend said of course not. They can only fight under such conditions. And although shamans are different, the strong ones can often show only half of their skills without weapons. Everything is so serious that the shaman should not part with weapons at all costs. But Yuzin can fight a go-class monster without weapons. Easily. In other words, if Siwu can defeat him, then he's a monster of a higher class. Okay. Well, Yuzin said to attack, didn't he? Siwu was still hesitating and trembling slightly, trying to figure out what he should do now. All of a sudden, he started attacking Yuxin, who was surprised at first, and then skillfully parried the attack. He started hitting Siwa's stomach, chest, and face. Yuxin took another step and swung his foot at his friend, sending him flying back against the wall, head first, and leaving a trail in the floor. Yuxin didn't ask if his friend was okay, because that didn't make sense. He understood the second he hit, and Yuxin could already see Siwa's regeneration. Meanwhile, Siwu got to his feet, his nose dripping blood, so he wiped it away with the sleeve of his clothes, soiling his sweatshirt. He said his friend was amazing, and since he wanted to save his friend by making him get ready, Yuxin didn't hold back. Taking a defensive stance, Siwu said that Yuxin is like the main character of Manhua, and since the damage dealt was close to zero, Yuxin was probably the losing side. It was like hitting a brick wall. If he had used less energy, he would have crushed all his bones. Siwu realized that his friend wouldn't be hurt even if he didn't control his power, and grinned. Yuxin himself was also ready to attack or defend at this moment. He realized that Siwu was a much more dangerous monster than he thought. The atmosphere in the room and the mood of the friends changed. Siwu moved first, leaving a bright light of magic behind, and reached out to grab his friend. Yuxin thought that Siwu was much faster than before, but his attack style didn't change at all. He was wrong, as Siwu grabbed his arm and threw him over, throwing Yuxin over his head with a bright flash of magic. A temporary ban, the energy of all created things had reached him. Horizontal descent, Yuxin asks that it descend and become one. There was a loud thud and Siwu flew into the ground, leaving behind a ceiling of light. Yuxin landed on the floor and said with a frown, What's going on? Is Siwu holding on to what Yuxin is thinking? 
Probably, yes. At this moment, Siwu was standing with the same horn on his forehead as when he fought Selwa, and in his hands was a goblin club. Siwu looked at what he had just done with delight and said that this was the first time he had pulled out a baton of his own free will. We need to talk about what might not be obvious. At the moment, Siwu's overall condition is rather sad. If we only talk about his physical stamina, then it's not so bad. But the problem lies in the spiritual energy. During the fight last night, Siwu had spent roughly 93% of his spiritual energy. Usually, this amount is restored for a full day of rest. Moreover, in the human realm, the process may take a long time. But ironically, his current depleted state helped a lot. When Siwu pulled out his goblin club and although he lacked control over his body, his consciousness and senses sharpened, allowing him to clearly remember the moment when he first used the Goblin Club. Yuzen said he was a little disappointed. He had read about the Goblin Club in old documents. Whether this weapon's power was exaggerated or just a problem with Siwu, he didn't know. Well, from what Yuzen saw and felt, Siwu didn't really impress him. However, Siwu himself admitted that he does not think that the documents are wrong. Yuxin carefully watched as his friend leapt into the air, swinging his baton, and a red trail of energy formed behind him. Siwu said that he also doesn't think he's superior to Yuxin compared to last time. At that moment, the goblins' club created a huge stream of bright red light magic that lit up the entire room. When the smoke cleared, Yuxin could be seen standing with his arms crossed in front of his face. He had protected himself and repelled the attack, so now his body was glowing with a blue light. Yuxin thought that Ziwu was more powerful than he had imagined, but if he was in an enhanced state, there was nothing he couldn't defend against. Hit after a big jump, the cost of stamina and energy will be quite large. Yuxin has no reason to deliberately close the distance. He can just keep up the defense and wait for Ziwu to run out of steam. The ceiling cracked. Siwu was sticking his goblin club in, starting to carry out his plan. He said it might work. Yuzin wondered what his friend was doing now. Siwu gave a mysterious grin and replied, Well, it will be difficult to win up close. He feels like he can't keep blocking the huge fist-like thing. If there's one thing Siwu knows for sure, it's that he won't be able to replicate the power of his previous baton. Size and power are nothing. Not even half the same as the last time he fought for the first time. But there's something else. This is the ability to freely change the form that Siwu can control, and he has enough cunning to use it. Siwu made a ball of energy out of the baton and said, It's time to start. This ball grew, forming a large ball of glowing magic. Then Siwu pushed it. There was a crack and a ceiling of energy rushed at Yuxin, who was watching in shock. He tried to deflect the attack, but it didn't work out, and in the end, Yuxin was sent flying to the side. He thought that there was no noticeable difference in aura compared to before. There was just a change in the form and management of it. The strength also increased many times. Yuxin looked at his friend from below and shouted, Does he really want to play dirty? Suwu continued to hang from the ceiling. He was holding onto one end of the club, and he was swinging the other end in the air. It was as if his horn was starting to burn even harder. Siwu said that he wasn't the most honest person himself, but it was Yuxin who wanted them to fight, right? This is a test to see if he can handle the yakai or not. It's better to be mean in a fight like this, doesn't Yuxin think so? There's no point in fighting fair in a battle to the death. Yuxin looked at his friend in fear and thought that his arguments were so strong that he couldn't even argue. Siwu said that if you think about it, even though the situation is a bit strange, they are just two good teenage buddies after all. Yuzin could tell that he was wrong, because sometimes admitting that he was wrong is the best way out. Yuxin thought that he couldn't stay idle any longer, so he decided to use his powers as well. He said that Siwu might be right, but his abilities aren't enough for a fair fight. What can I do then? Is that how it's going to be, Choi Siwu? Yuzin shivered as he looked at his friend, who was hanging over his head, holding onto a club and forming a ball of magic with his feet. Yuzin said that he had had enough of this nonsense and grinned. Siwu joked that he was very scared. A second later, he started attacking again, and now the bursts of light were much brighter and more powerful. Siwu's eyes shone with a white light, and he looked very intimidating. There was a rumble, and Yuxin thought he should get faster, but it was getting harder and harder to avoid his friend's attacks. It adapts to the martial art of Siwu, as well as speed, and is quite fast. A piece of the baton flew past Yuxin and he took advantage of it by grabbing it. Wrong place, he thought. A moment later, a lump of Ziwu energy flew at Yuxin, causing him to fly into the wall. There was a deafening crash. Siwu himself didn't expect his attack to be so strong, so he exclaimed, Is Yuxin okay? He thought that he had changed his tactics to minimize the effect of Yuxin's attacks. Although they were much weaker than before, it looked like he was already injured. Siwu tried to see his friend through the smoke. 
the righteous comfort of longevity, the true ruler that allows the sun and flags to shine brightly, urgency prescribed by law and required by equals. When the last of the magic dissipated, Yuxin was seen holding a goblin club wrapped around his arm, grinning contentedly. Then he began to retaliate by attacking his friend. Arrows pierce willow leaves like thorns. Siwu was surprised, but he managed to react in time and repel his friend's attack, preparing to attack back. He was using his baton as Yuxin charged at him. Their battle continued and it was still not clear who would be the winner. Yuzin was more serious now than at first. A monarch of moonbeams that changes the color of the crimson skies. Right now, Yushin doesn't use any rituals to help his combat skills. As a result, this greatly hinders him. For example, he can't use most of his techniques, but even if he could, it would be difficult for him to control his strength. Siwu landed on the floor, still gripping his goblin club in both hands. Urgency prescribed by law and required by equals. By adding his own energy, Yuzen creates an instrument of his own power. A black mask appeared on his face and a spiral of blue magic formed around him. Siwu, meanwhile, continued to act with clenched teeth as well. The art of the motherland and the heavenly sword. Even if it is done in a hurry, the strength that is needed to defeat the Yokai is amazing. Siwu and Yuxin started attacking each other at the same time, so there was a clash of their blue and red magic. A second later, Siwu saw that his goblin club was damaged, while Yuzin calmly continued to use his glowing sword. The moment before the end, the reason why Yuzin hesitated was because his friend was standing in front of him. But the reason why he brought it to the end was because his friend was standing in front of him. Siwu swung his hand to hit Yuxin, but Yuxin dodged and blocked the attack deftly. Yuxin punched Siwa in the side, and a moment later, he was hit back directly in his own face. As Yuxin flew off and fell to the floor, Siwu wondered why his friend spared him in the end. Even if Yuxin had finished him off, Siwu would have recovered quickly. Then Yuxin replied that this was not the case. He just used all of his exorcism art power. If the enemy was a yakai, then he wouldn't be able to stand even at the level of Kai no matter how strong he was. Just like how Shiwu's goblin club shattered, it's just that the technique recognizes creatures like him as non-yakai. Siwu listened intently, surprised. Yuzin meanwhile with a sore nose and blood on his face as well as tears in his eyes continued to lie on the floor and said that Siwu was a vile jerk. The bright sun shone down on the city as the two friends walked down the street. Yuxin looked sad and had a band-aid on his nose. He asked Siwu to say something already. It really pisses him off when Siwu is so nervous around him. Siwu meanwhile twitched and said, Well, does his nose hurt a lot? If there is a scar, it will be bad. Yuzin then replied that there would be no scar. He might not have the same powerful body as a monster, but he also worked hard on it. Broken bones and torn skin will heal in a day. Plus, Siwu restrained his power right before the strike, right? Siwu touched his friend's nose, and Siwu continued to say that the second he realized that Yuxin's attack didn't work, Siwu loosened the blow. If he didn't, Yuxin wouldn't have a nose left. Yes, it has potential. If he wants to run around the city and catch monsters, then fine, let him do what he wants. Siwu was about to thank his friend for understanding, but Yuxin said that he still didn't understand something. Is he acting like this just because he made a promise? He handed something to his friend and told him to take it. It was a keychain consisting of a ring and three colored elements. Siwu said it looks like a pumpkin, right? Yuzin said yes, because they are pumpkins. Consumable, something like a one-time bomb. To activate it, you need to hold it in your hand and say quickly and confidently, SVH. Well, if Siva is in a hurry, you can just throw it on the ground. With his strength, it will probably be enough to squeeze it in your hands. Then the magic inside the gourd will activate. So we should use this when he is in danger. He should try not to break several pumpkins together, even if he wants to use a couple at once. Siwu took the item from his friend with a sad look and thanked him. But can he accept three? This is where the Yuxin energy is stored, isn't it? And very much, he doesn't think that such things are easy to do. Yuzin looked at his friend in surprise, raised his eyebrows, and said, What's going on? How does Siwu know? Had he seen them before? Siwu said no. It's not that. Holding it in his hands, he feels the energy of his friend. The energy he used to fight him. A lot of this energy is stored inside these pumpkins. Siwu's observation was correct. Three colored streams, a dharma storage type implement mainly used by the Yuxin family. When the shaman has time, he pours his energy into a specially crafted gird so that in a critical situation, the wearer can use magic that would otherwise be difficult to concentrate. The wearer doesn't have to be the creator of the item. Anyone with a pumpkin can use the Dharma tool to cast magic. The purpose of processing joints is to seal the energy, so that you can look inside and even find out how much energy there is and what type it belongs to. Yuxin frowned slightly and asked his friend to show him his hand. 
Siwu was surprised for a second and asked, his hand. Why, is there something out there? Siwu obediently extended his left hand forward. Although it is said that you can tell a lot about the fate of a person just by looking at the length and shape of the palms, this is mostly untrue. Yuxin leaned over his friend's hand and began to examine it carefully. He said that, however, some things could still be understood. In his mind, Yuzin was very surprised, what is this thing? It seems that Siwu doesn't just have a predisposition, it's the epitome of talent, the level of a spiritual person, master, or guru like a shaman. Although Yuxin isn't completely sure about his friend's hand, it's one thing to see three colored streams, but the way it looked during the fight, this is quite enough for the output. Yuxin raised his shocked gaze to Siwu, who asked in a slightly startled manner, what is it? Yuzin, meanwhile, thought that if he were a monster, he would tell his father right away. No, he can check everything himself without needing anyone's permission. Siwu's talent is so high that even if he was accepted as a disciple from the street, no one would mind. It's not too late, is it? Although they can't hide the fact that Siwu is a monster, there is no doubt that he is also a half-human with his own will. No, those stubborn assholes would never agree to that. Yuzin was referring to the monsters. Moreover, these creatures can misunderstand everything. A goblin with a shaman's talent. Honestly, if it wasn't for Siwu, Yuxin wouldn't be looking at him so kindly. If he had found out just three days earlier, things might have been different. With an effort, Yuxin changed his face, smiling slightly, and let go of his friend's hand, saying that his life was complicated. Siwu was surprised. His friend was able to see it just by looking at his palm. Yuzin replied, maybe yes, maybe no. Anyway, when is Siwu thinking of coming back to school? Thinking about it, Siwu replied, well, first you need to find a new uniform, right? He doesn't have any clothes except for a tracksuit. Yuxin can imagine Siwu's legs seem to have shrunk by a size. This impresses him. He stamped his feet on the asphalt. Yuxin said with a smirk, but the reaction of everyone in the school will be worth it. If Siwu himself didn't tell anyone that he was Choi Siwu, I wonder how many people would recognize him. At that moment, Siwu's eyes widened, because he didn't even think about it. After a moment, he glared at his friend and said, He's having fun, isn't he? Siwu has a headache just thinking about it. Yuxin, who was just waiting for this, replied, It can't be, it's too late. Yuxin looked at the screen of her phone. It was now 12 to 6. He said he understood now, why he's hungry. Siwu suggested that we go and eat nearby. He treats us. Then his friend asked him why. Can't they go to Siwu's and eat there? He remembers the kimchi fried rice that Siwu made last time. It was delicious. Then he added pork to it, so they can buy pork from the supermarket now. Siwu laughed awkwardly and said it was a problem. He has a guest right now, and most likely the guest is sleeping right now. Yuzin asked in surprise, a guest? Siwu said yes. He also needs to go somewhere after they win. Yuxin listened suspiciously to his friend. He said, hey, he doesn't need to squeeze out what he doesn't want to say. Yuxin said to let Siwu do what he wants with the monsters. He doesn't pay attention to it. Siwu seems to have things to do, so he'll just go. Next time, Siwu should treat him. Yuzin started to walk away from his friend, but then he turned around and told Siwu not to be sad, like he'd committed a crime or something. Whoever Siwu meets, let them straighten their shoulders and confidently go to this meeting, because they are more than strong enough to do so. Soon, Siwu found himself in a completely different place. He looked around and thought that it was quite an old neighborhood. The buildings seem abandoned. Is it exactly in the right place? Next to it was an iron door, above which hung a sign that read in Chinese. Siwu looked around and wondered, Dark Moon Rising House. What does it mean? He had little knowledge of the Chinese characters used in the context of Korean writing. Suddenly, the door opened and a tall guy dressed in a black shirt and white pants appeared in front of Siwu. The stranger had tattoos on his arm. Siwu shivered and thought that it was a monster, and a very strong one. Then the stranger just passed by. Someone looked at Siwa and exclaimed, Oh, it's a new guest. There was a nice girl nearby and she said that she was glad to see Siwa. Her name is Hongryun, and she is the head of the Dark Moon Rising House. Choi Siwu greeted and introduced himself hesitantly. He said that yesterday he was told about this place and given the address. They said that Siwu should come here. First, the girl asked, Oh, Siva. She had already heard about it from the elder human. Hongryun asked me to go inside. Siwu reflected that it wasn't exactly dark inside, but rather a black fog shrouding everything. As he walked, his footsteps echoed slightly. Looking up, Siwu was surprised to see traditional Korean buildings in front of him. A minute later, he was sitting at the table with Hongryun in front of him. She asked the guest to help himself, and Siwu replied that he was grateful for the hospitality. 
he said they weren't going to Seoul, were they? Not only are there no houses on the horizon, but the air and wind seem so fresh. Hongryan replied that Siwu was right. The house of the rising dark moon is separated from the human world. It's been kept away from civilization and progress for hundreds of years, so it's full of fresh air and energy. If Siwu asks why, they are a shop that offers various products to help the inhabitants of the monster world adapt to the human world. Siwu remembered Babai's words about how if he went there in the daytime, they would help him. But if they called themselves a monster shop, that was different. At that moment, there was a click because Siwu snapped his fingers and an inventory appeared out of thin air. He opened the box and showed Hongryan the contents. Siwu said he was given it. They said it was a currency from the monster world, but can he use it here? Hongryan clapped her hands with a smile and exclaimed, These are monster coins. Well, of course, they can help at all, both with the purchase and with the exchange. Siwu asked again, by exchange. Hongryan replied, Yes, there are those who work in the human world. Such monsters often exchange coins for human money. At the current exchange rate of this nation, one coin is equal to three million one, of course, including commission. Siwu was completely shocked by the information he heard. If he exchanges all his coins, how much money will he have? Siwu has never had more than 720,000 won in his entire life. Hongryan lightly waved her hand and asked if he wanted to take a look at the goods. She ordered the servant to show the guests their demon spirit pill. The servant replied, yes, ma'am. He brought a box and opened it. Siwu looked inside and listened to Hongryan say that it was a demonic spirit pill in front of him. This is the most popular item in their shop, because the pill accelerates the recovery of the monster's strength. As you know, in the human world, there is almost no natural power of monsters, and even in the monster world itself, recovery takes some time. Therefore, one pill is made from the many elements of the monster realm using the secret technique of their house of the rising dark moon. Hongryan said that even in an environment where monsters are naturally weak, you can restore your strength immediately after consuming it. Siwu exclaimed what he was buying. He needs it, so he wants to take it. The colors of the containers in which they are stored are different. Is there a difference in the effect? Hongryan replied, Yes, the color of the container is responsible for the demonic pill class. Prices in monster coins, Nuin, for a silver pill 10 Nuin, for a gold pill 3 Nuin, and for a black pill 1 Nuin. The higher the class, the faster the recovery rate, so if Siwu is in a hurry, then Hanryan advises black. Siwu thought about it and after a short period of time replied that he needed one black one for now. Can he eat the pill right now? Peggy grinned and said, of course. If he uses it slowly, the effect will appear closer to night. Inwardly, Hongryan thought that there really wouldn't be a difference. They often argue about strength, but two main criteria can be distinguished, the size and speed of need and absorption. That is, internal alchemy. The size of the Neden is also called the total amount of monster power. This increases with age and the number of creatures eaten. But with the rate of absorption, it's not all that simple. It takes into account the environment or food consumed by monsters to restore their strength. Siwu, meanwhile, was looking at his black pill as he prepared to knit it. It is very difficult to increase one's speed through extraneous methods so it usually depends on one's talent or bloodline influence. Hongryan thought that if we were talking about high-ranked monsters, these creatures would spend three or four hours absorbing the black demon spirit pill. But if you are dealing with a half-monster body, then half of it will not be absorbed in a couple of days, after which the pill will leave the body naturally. But she didn't lie, Hongryan was looking at Siwu who was about to put the pill in his mouth. She thought that if he swallowed at least some of it, his needin would recover by nightfall. Siwu, meanwhile, swallowed the pill. According to Hongryan's assessment, the black pill is too strong for Siwu. With a single pill, he would be able to recover three, four, or five times. Hongryan was about to say something, but there was a bright flash of white light, and then a very powerful stream of air soared straight into the sky. The table overturned and all the dishes fell from it. But this means that the effect is limited to the size of its needin. Hongryan crawled back in horror and thought, no way. Zhu had just swallowed a pill. It had only been a few seconds, but in that amount of time, the entire volume of his monster power had recovered. Zhu let out a tired sigh and said, of course, for a low-level pill, it worked too well, didn't it? He stood wrapped in his magic and purple light. Choi Siwu experienced 100% or more of his monster power for the first time in his life. 